All right, today's class is going to be about counsel. Counsel is something that a lot of times we neglect to do as adults is counsel. We tend to make decisions like we're still living in the world. Um, that it only, as if it only affects us, not realizing that it affects all of us. Every decision that we make, if you look at the people around you, the people in this truth, uh, that you call your brothers and sisters, every decision you make, even the, some of the smallest ones that you think are insignificant, they affect us. They affect us. Brothers, when I say every decision that you make affects your brothers and your sisters and it's true, give me some examples of what I might, meet, might need, mean. We don't have a mic for, the, for down there. Oh, that's the mic for down there. I like the TV mic say you do. Uh, yeah, that's a direct effect. But I'm talking about something like the decisions that you make personally. Our actions, like if we go out to steal something with friends, and all of us. Right, absolutely. Definitely sinning uh, will affect the brothers because we represent each other, the sisters because we represent each other. So our actions affect. The things that I do in my personal life, it affects everybody else. If me and my wife fall out and I can't take care of my household, it's going to affect the church. People that looked up to us, they're going to look at us like, you know, hey, I, I, I feel a little bit worse about this truth because I thought y'all was the, the picture perfect this or that. You know what I'm saying? So that the stuff inside my house, the stuff inside your houses, it affects, we affect each other. And I want everybody to understand that because a lot of times in life, we don't realize that we think the same way as it is in the world that we can just go in and go on about our lives and whatnot and do me. But that ain't the case in this truth because we are a body. I'm going to read something real quick. Um, 1 Corinthians 12. And we read this a lot, but I wanted to really sink in what it means. You got it? Start at 14. It's the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 14. For the body is not one member, no, but many. Start at uh, 12. Book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members. Just like your body, your, your fleshly body, the body is one body, it's one whole unit. But it has many members, has many movable parts, workable parts. Some parts stay still. Some parts move around. Some parts seem more uh, important than others. Like you would think that if you didn't have hands, that your body is just, it's over. Life is over. You're jacked up. But the things that you can't see are more important, like your heart, your lungs, your kidneys. Those are more important. They'll stop your whole life, stop the whole body from working. You can lose a finger, lose an arm, you know, breathe. And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. Read that again. For as the body is one and have many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. What does that mean, brothers? I'm going to have the class, all, this whole class is going to be interactive. I'm going to keep asking y'all questions. So start getting a little bit of courage. Brother, start getting a little bit of oomph. Because I'm going to start calling on you. I'm going to look for the scariest one and I'm going to pick him. Go ahead. You said you raised, you raised your hand. What does that mean? Read it again. Verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Not the last part, not the so also is Christ, but the yeah, first part. Um, everybody, everybody has a part to play in, 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 in the body. Uh, I like that answer. Read it again. All is one. For as I like the, that answer. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. What they're saying is that all of us are one body. We all affect each other. All of us affected. Until you separate, until you say, I'm not a part of the body no more, and you sever yourself, or you get severed through sin, meaning you got to get purged out. Why you here, why we're all in the same, under the same belief, we all one body. And everything that we do affects each other. 
Everything we do affects each other. You want to say something? Yeah. Um, it's showing you that you really can't have that indiv individualistic mindset. Right. Because um, you have to come to the realization that if we're all one body, everything you do affects the other parts of your body. So, for example, you stump your toe. You feel that sensation go throughout your entire body, how it affects all of you. Now you're limping. Now you're sitting down and you can't go do the rest of the things that you would normally do. The individual things that you do affects everyone in here. So you can't think selfishly about the things that you want to do. You have to think, how does it affect my brother or sister? Right. Absolutely. Read on. Verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, or have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. The body is not one member, but many. The church, us in particular, we're not, we wouldn't be nothing if it was just one brother up here. Me and two brothers. Me and Uncle Az and I up here teaching each other back and forth. That's not the body. That's not the body. All the members, all of us put together, that's the body. We're the body of Christ. Many members working together, affecting each other, decisions that we make. And the information that we disseminate, it comes from the Bible, but it goes down a channel. You understand? Just like every movement that the regular body makes, it comes from your mind, and then it goes through the channel to make the movements. You understand what I'm saying? Read on. Can I ask um, if they understand what for, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body? So what is that showing? Exactly. So the, the thing that makes us one body is the fact that we all agree in this Bible. It's, it's the fact that we are all keeping God's commandments. In the world, we all had our individual mindsets. We did all these individual things, and there was nothing that really tied us together of, of any power or strength. But in this, the one reason we're all in here, everyone is in here, is because of this Bible. We don't. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the head, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Read on. And if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? And if the whole hearing, where were the smelling? But now have God Start set, back up at 15. Verse 15. If the foot shall say, because I'm not the head, I am not of the body. If the foot shall say, because I am not the head, I'm not of the body. What does that mean for the for us in the church? How do you how do you um, flip that or make that what's the word I'm looking for? Applicable. Applicable to the church. To us in here, brothers. Right here. leadership and uh, you feel like you're not part of the body right right that nobody in here should feel like because they are not leadership or because they're not known or because they're not popular or because they're not on the this committee or the that committee that they're not part of the body everybody all the sisters everybody that sits in here like the officer was bringing out we come together because we believe not because we got an office to do this, or an office to do that, or we work in the camera, or going out to camp, or whatever, because we believe in Christ. That's what makes you a part of the body. If you believe that Christ is the Messiah, that he's black, not white, that you're an Israelite, and we're supposed to keep God's commandments, then we all have that thing in common, and that would, that's what binds us together as the body of Christ. So the foot can't say, read that part again, 15. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. The, put, the foot can't say because I'm not the hand, I'm not part of the body. Yes, you are. Because you're a brother, you're part of the body. Because you're a sister, you're part of the body. Y'all might not know it, but everybody that's in here, when we're sitting up here, we always, who is that? Who is that? What's going on with him? What's going on with her? It's not to be busy bodies. It's to make sure that we paying attention to what's going on in the body. Who's talking to that brother? Who's talking to that sister? Let's find out what's going on with him. And so we can make sure the same way in your in your own body, if some unfamiliar you see something unfamiliar on your body, you're gonna familiarize yourself with it. Make sure you're not sick. 
Was you about to say something? No. Read on. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? And if the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? What that's going into is all of us, our body, this body of Christ right here, this church, from here to California to New York, all of us, everybody has different functions. And every function is important. Everybody's not going to be the, the camp warrior. Some of you brother's spirits ain't to, the spirit to go to camp. But y'all might be good on the computer. Some of the sisters might not be able to cook. But they'll make sure that the school is spotless. As a matter of fact, sisters, the school was dirty as a mug. I came here, the school was terrible. We're going to have to have a talk about that. We're going to have to get a committee for that. For real. But the school was terrible. But anyway, like I was saying, everybody ain't going to have the same function. But everybody's a part of the body. Everybody's a part of the body. Everybody's important. And everything that you do affects the brother or the sister next to you. Affects these little children that run around here. Everything that we do. Be, they, they, the reason I say it is because we be having some secret stuff going on from here to New York, from here to New York, and here. Some secret stuff to be going on in here. And people act like that it don't affect nobody but them. It affects us all. Everything, even something like marriage. If any of y'all want to get married, it's, let everybody know. Let everybody know so we can celebrate together. Don't do nothing in secret. Read on. Verse 18, but now have God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? Mm -hmm. But now are they many members, but yet one body. It says there's many members in here, but we are one body. All fitly joined together, and we all affect each other. And we should all love each other. Like me, I ain't got no animosity against my, my body parts. Neither should we have any animosity against the members in this body. I don't have any secrets. My body knows what my body's doing. Can we go over verse 18 again? Go ahead, absolutely. Verse 18. But now have God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it have pleased him. Who can explain that? Who knows what that means? Hey, we need some participation. Everybody should have their hands up. Start picking them out. Okay. Go ahead. God puts you in the position that he wants you to play. Exactly. God put the hand right where he wanted. God put the arm on the body where he wanted. He put the knee where he wanted. He put the eyes where he wanted. So the same thing with the body of Christ. Go ahead, brother. You had something you want to add to that? Right. Great. Exactly. So just like the captain was saying, you might not be that camp brother, you might not be the video brother, but just play the purpose that God put you here for. And the thing is, actually play the purpose. Some brothers get comfortable sitting there. Every, you know, we all are supposed to be doing something in the body. You know, if, if you're sitting in the body and you ain't doing nothing, on your physical body, that's like a growth. <laughs> you know, every part of your body has a function. If you're sitting there here and you find yourself and you ask yourself, what do I do from week to week? I've been around a, a year, six months, a year. What am I doing? What am I trying to do to put my brick in? If, it, if the answer that you come up with within yourself is nothing, then you got to ask yourself, how profitable are you to the body? And I'm not saying that for anybody to, to feel any way about it, but I hope you do feel a way about it because it makes you check yourself. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you going to offer to this truth? It might not be camp. Maybe it ain't flyers. Maybe it's something that you know personally that you have a skill, a trade, or something that you can offer week to week. Maybe it's just to volunteer and come clean. Maybe it's to make sure you check the slack and see what needs to be done and handle that. But you got to be doing something in the body. Everybody understand that? Sure. Brothers? Yes, sir. Sisters? Sisters, y'all understand? All right, cool. Cool, read on. Verse 20. But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again to the head, to the feet, I have no need of you. And it goes back into what I was saying about um, everything that we do affects each other. 
don't ever get the the, the, the the mind state that when you're going about your everyday life or whatever, that you don't have no need of the body. The, the world, remember, we shut the world out when we come into the truth. We got to because the world will try to pull us back into it. So our world now is right in here in the body. What we should be doing is pulling close to each other, intertwining our lives with each other so we can make sure that we actually know each other. What does the scripture say about a friend? What, what are you supposed to do if you want a friend? Prove a friend first. How can y'all prove each other? How can we prove each other if the only time we see each other is today and then seven days from now? And after that, we don't see each other. Who can honestly, how many people here honestly say that they're proving the brothers and sisters in here? Because proving a friend ain't just about marriage. I know we only use it when it comes to marriage. Like, you got to prove the brother first. You got to prove the sister. But it's, it's more than that. We constantly supposed to be proving each other. Y'all do realize that, right? How many of y'all, I mean, you ain't got to raise your hands or whatever. How many of y'all really get the numbers of the brothers and sisters and try to communicate on a daily basis, on a, on a every other day or whatever, and really try to at least speak to each other? I already know it's not a lot. Especially I, on the sister side. I, yeah, especially on the sister side. And, and it's funny because what happens is, we come around each other and it's shalom and most high in Christ blessed and we're giving these big grand hugs or whatever. We really don't even know each other. We don't know each other that well. We know each other up in here. We might click on Facebook every once in a while and see each other or whatever, but we really don't know each other. You know what the sisters do? Shalom, I miss you so much. Oh Lord, I got that selfie. And then... Yeah, get that, get that weekly selfie. But you wouldn't have to miss them if you was talking to them throughout the week. If you actually miss them. Mm -hmm. You know, but go ahead. Yeah, that's funny. The week, that's funny you say that, the, the selfie. They get the weekly selfie. selfie. Week. <laughs> you would think on Facebook that, man, they be really tight or whatever. How many times a week y'all talk to each other? Once? Every on the side. Yeah. That's when we together. That's it. The purple garment they got on. Every selfie. Every selfie got on purple. Like y'all ain't got but one outfit. <laughs> purple and gold outfit. That's it. I you our sister, the C sisters are broke. They got one fit. No, they, they like a cartoon character. I always got to see. <laughs> right. That's why when we do the events or whatever, just going on, uh, Officer Kajalaki is trying to put together many fundraising events that we're going to be doing going towards the future or whatever. That's why it's important for everybody to show up, not only to raise money, but so that we can prove each other, so that we can get acquainted with each other, so we can fall in love with each other and care about each other and know what's going on with each other and actually you know be one body and <laughs> really get to replace the wicked friendships that we had in the world because if you see in the heathen six days a week and you see in your israelite family one day a week you're going to get more inclined to be around them even though you you see them as heathen you're still being taught their ways because you're around them absolutely you're absolutely right that's part of us really really though that's part of us coming together and learning each other and falling in love with each other. Because let something happen to one of y'all. We only see you every once in a while, but let something happen. Where's the first place y'all gonna go? You can't go to your family. You've been telling them the day the devil. Where you gonna go? You gonna come back in here. It's like, ah, oh, dang, I didn't know that was going on with what you. you that, yeah, what, what, who is he? He, be here. He, he missed the last two, but he was here to, who is she? I don't know, she be in the back. He don't see her that much, she don't talk that much. After Sabbath, she's gone. That ain't how we going that ain't how we going to um, be one spirit, one mind, one spirit. It's the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. It says that we all supposed to speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions among you. No divisions. But that ye be perfectly joined together. In the same mind and in the same judgment. Now, you know, that's going to take work. For us to be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment, that's going to take work. I got to actually know you. You got to know me. Know what sets me off. Know what makes me mad, happy, sad. What, what I think is funny. I got to know the same thing about you because it's going to come a day that we're going to have to pull together. We're going to have to pull together. I should know where you're at. Know what, what you know, saying. That's why y'all wonder why in, in security we have ID checks and all that stuff, because we want to know the people that are in here. All those IDs, probably, matter of fact, all of y'all's IDs, I got it on a drive in my phone to make sure that I know y'all, because we trying to pay attention to 
everybody that's in here. Why? Because we got children in here. We got women in here. We want to make sure that the brothers is in the spirit. Don't nobody sneak in here crazy. You know what I'm saying? And y'all should know us. Y'all should know us. Y'all should be trying to know us. Y'all should be trying to know each other. You understand that? Everybody needs to really start making a conscious effort to pull together and be family. And when you ain't around here, trust, like the officer brought out a minute ago, you're doing something. You're talking to somebody. If you ain't talking to the people in here, you're talking to somebody. Ain't nobody sitting at home in a lonely chair just chilling by themselves. You're talking to somebody. Old, old, for your sisters, an old girlfriend in the world. Girl, this and that, yada, 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 yeah, mm hmm Somebody's scratching your, your talking itch. Brothers, it might be sports, I don't know. But if y'all ain't hanging out with each other, then y'all hanging out with the people in the world. It ain't no if, ands, buts about it. Y'all hanging out with somebody. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15 and verse 33. Read that. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. It says evil communications corrupt good manners. Anything that's, any communication outside of righteousness is evil communication. The, the murmuring, the, 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 the backbiting, the talking about stuff that's unseemly, that's evil communications. Talking to the people in the world, that's evil communications. Because we're supposed to hate the world. Remember, when we come into Christ, we're supposed to hate the world. They're supposed to get on our nerves. Where's that scripture, the, the discourse of the, uh, is irksome. Find it for me. They're supposed to get on our nerves. Hearing the conversation that they got, that stuff's supposed to get on our nerves. We're supposed to be breaking, that's only a few people I talk to. I know me personally. It's only, a, it's only a few people I talk to when I'm just chilling. It's only a few people. When I'm having major conversations, the only ones that I talk to are Israelites. I can't even think of nobody else out there. Is anybody else outside of Israel I talk to? I, don't, I can't think of nobody else that I talk to. I only want to talk to Israelites. Every, once, every time I, my, my wicked family, I get in contact with them or they get in contact with me, it's always some drama, it's always some mess. Something that just is just irksome. You find the scripture? Sure. Something that's just irksome, just gets on my nerves. I do not want to communicate with them. I took a trip to Kentucky. Check this story out. I took a trip to Kentucky. I got a cousin in Kentucky that broke her neck to come to where I was at before I jumped on the plane to sit down because she wanted to talk to me. I talked to her for about two hours about the Bible. And this dizzy broad, I'm telling you, about two hours about the Bible and 45 minutes before I had to leave to jump back on to jump on the plane to come back. After two hours of talking to her about the Bible, she says, hey cuz, I got some Tylenol threes, you want one? <laughs> Basically, you wanna get high before you get on the plane? We just got through talking about the Bible for two hours, you dizzy demon, what the, what's wrong with you? And she meant it. That's what the world has to offer. Right now, I got some news that, ah, uh, I ain't even gonna bring it up. Thanks. Yeah, I ain't gonna bring it up. The world is, the world will eat you alive. Evil communication corrupt good manners. The world will eat you alive. Just being around them and communicating and hearing their discourse, it'll corrupt you, it'll mess you up. Trust, read that. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach in the Apocrypha, chapter 27, verse 12. If thou be among the indiscreet, if you're amongst the ungodly, the worldly, your mama and them, your cousin and them, dude and them at work, observe the time. Observe the time, meaning pay attention. Don't spend too much time around them. What do they have to offer you? Nothing. They want you to come back into the world, misery, loves company. They want you to be just like them. Read. But be continually among men of understanding. Men of understanding. Men that understand what? That we got to keep God's commandments. Men that understand that we can't sin against each other. We're supposed to love each other. Faith in Christ. Men that at least understand that Christ is black. And believe that. Be around men of understanding. Women of understanding. And how are we going to do that? We're going to have to spend time with each other. Up in here. And not just up in here. Forgive me for that. Because that means y'all just going to show up on the Sabbath. And after that's a wrap. Throughout the week. Calling each other. Speaking with each other. Malachi chapter 3 verse 16. Verse 13. Yeah, read, read it, read it. Verse 13. The discourse of fools is irksome. Ah, that's what I wanted. And their sport is in the wantonness of sin. It says the discourse or the talk, the conversation of fools is irksome. 
it should get on your nerves like, oh, I can't be around this too much longer. I do not give two rats butts what LeBron did. You, got uh, you got a question? Yes, sir, could you repeat the uh, scripture Ecclesiastes? This is the book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach in the Apocrypha, chapter 27, verse 12 and 13. Read it, read it again. Both of them? Yes. Verse 12. If thou be among the indiscreet, observe the time. But be continually among men of understanding. It says, be around men of understanding. Be around those that are like-minded. Remember we read in Corinthians, it said, perfectly joined together. Same mind, same judgment. That's who you need to be around. Because those are the people that are going to help you get to your goals. Our goals are, are what is our main goal? Kingdom. We're trying to get to the kingdom. You ain't going to get to the kingdom hanging with Gossip Girl and them. You ain't going to get to the kingdom there. Because they're going the opposite way. Give me that in um, Amos. How can two walk together? Mm -hmm. You ain't gonna get to the kingdom with them because they're going the opposite way. We cannot reach our goals by dealing with people that are um, contrary to our movement. We can't. We're not gonna reach our goals like that. And our goals is to get to our goal. Our number one goal is to get up out of this captivity, get to the kingdom, so we can put our foot on the neck of our oppressors. That's right. I know me. I don't want to get to the kingdom so I can sit there and eat grapes. I'm coming back. I'll, I'll be the first one. Lord, like we going out on a mission. I'm like, yeah, my boots on. <laughs> Slept with my boots on. Let's go. <laughs> going to get the foot on the neck. I'm going to come back with all kind of Adam's apple on my boots. <laughs> Read that. This is the book of Amos, chapter 3 and verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? It says, can two walk together except they be agreed? How can you... Even stomach being in the world, even stomach talking to the people that are contrary to keeping God's commandments, unless you agree with them. Every beast can sort of with his life. It says, can two walk together, at least they be agreed? No, that's the answer to the question. No, we cannot walk together if we, unless we agree. Because if I'm going this way and you going that way, eventually we're going to split up. Either I'm going to pull you the way that I'm going, or you're going to pull me the way that you're going. But we ain't going to be able to walk together and disagreement. For one, it's going to be turmoil. It's going to be fighting. And somebody is going to have to trim their way and follow the other. Read. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 13, verse 15. Every beast loveth his life. It says, every beast loveth his life. Stop. Brothers, what does that mean? Go we at? Sirach 13. Nah, hold on. Right here. I like every basic to look at a little bit of his life. It's like a person who got similarity, like similarity in uh, character. The uh yeah, got mesh together. Right. Right, right. Exactly. Every beast every beast loveth is like, meaning everybody wants to be around somebody that's like them. So if you find yourself always talking to people that ain't in the truth. Always caught up in conversations and hanging out with people that ain't in the truth. You find yourself at work and you got a little click at work. After you, I understand the click before you got, came into the truth. You might have came into the truth 15 minutes ago and you still kept the residuals of the little click or you don't know how to separate from them yet. But some of y'all been in the truth for a couple weeks, couple months, couple years. And y'all still at work with them same hangouts, having them same conversations. They wouldn't even know if they didn't if they didn't see you in fringes and whatnot. They wouldn't even know that you was in the truth if they didn't see you in here, because your conversation is nothing about the truth. You might sprinkle them with a little bit of Jesus juice every once in a while, but after that, it's back to whatever they're talking about. Every beast love is light. The only reason you hanging out with them is because there's something with about them that is still in you that you like. And if you find yourself seven days a week. Well, six days a week, because on the seventh day, I hope you're resting. I hope you ain't talking to them. But six days a week, your work days or whatever, you find that if you tally up and you're spending more time with them, and the only thing you can say you spend spending with Israel is the Sabbath and the new moon. What we got about six days? What we got about six, six Sabbaths in a month? We got, we got four, and then we got the new moon, new moon, and then sometimes we got the high holy days that, that fall in a lot of these months. So six days out of a month, maybe at least five days out of the month, you're Israelite and the rest of the time you're spending the majority with people that don't believe. Then you know you're tripping. 
you got to really take stock in yourself, some, some personal inventory and be like, what am I really on? You know what I'm saying? What do I spend most of my time really? Am I really in this truth or am I just, you know, going through the motions? Because remember, go ahead say what you was going to say real quick. You, you know good, you know that uh, when you have conversation with these people, they always end up saying, you know, you know, stop talking to me about all that Bible stuff. You know, let's talk about what we used to talk about. So what you end up doing, talking about everything but about the Lord. You start trimming your way to seek their love. Mm -hmm. So so one of one thing's going to happen. Either they're going to become what you want them to become or you're going to become what they want you to become. You can't stay separate. Two walk together, that means they're going to start agreeing together. So you have to be careful who you're talking to because if you're talking to them, Either they're going to pull you towards them, or you're going to pull them towards you. Absolutely. Read that again in Amos. It's the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 3. Can two walk together, except they be agreed? No. Two can walk, not walk together, except they be agreed. Every beast consorted with his like. Mm -hmm. The only reason that y'all walking together, talking together, chilling together, if they not Israel, is because something in you is still holding on to the world. And what, matter of fact, I'm going to say it. There's a brother that was with us. I'm the, I gotta, I don't know, I gotta say it. There's a brother that was with us, fell off once, tried to start his own thing, him and his brother. Came back, apologized, then fell off again. Don't laugh, I'm gonna bring it out. Then fell off again. Yeah. And came back. We had a sister in Orlando. Nice little young sister or whatever, just as cute as she could be. Parents raised her right. She ain't raising the commandments, but you know, she was, you know, quiet sister, smart girl, college girl, whatever. He was interested in her. They got together, got married, did everything according to the, to, you know, supposedly according to the laws. And this Negro was still had connections in the world, had relationships in the world as far as his friends, family, had a wicked brother that was with us and fell off to. He fell out the truth. Evil, com evil, communica com evil communications corrupted his good manners. And now his evil communications and his family and his mess corrupted that young girl's manners. And guess what they doing now? Making porn videos. <laughs> Real talk. Real, hey. Come on, you made that up. Real, I got pictures, but I ain't gonna show them. I got pictures, but I ain't gonna show them. They make it, they make it. Nah, I ain't bringing it out. No, I'm keeping it in. Can I ask you a question? No, you go on. Go ahead. Hey, brothers, how many of y'all watch the Discovery Channel? Who watches the Discovery Channel, right? There's a gazelle yeah. hang with a, 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 a lion? No, right? So you can't be hanging with those that's wicked in the world. You gotta yeah, hang with those too. that are like-minded, those that are like you. Those that have repented, those that are keeping the commandments. Because if you that gazelle hanging out with them lions in the midst of wickedness, you're going to get ate up. You're going to get torn. And that's that's what happened to that brother mm -hmm. and that sister. They're getting ate up now. Yeah. So you be mindful of your communications, who you around. And it be those, and it be those ones like that that will say, I'll never leave the truth. You ain't got to be in the with IUIC to be in the truth. And you ain't got to be, they just making a provision so they can slip on up. And then the world going to eat them up. And right now, like the officer brought out, they being eaten alive. They being eaten alive. It ain't no telling what you're, I'm telling you. Brothers, I know a lot of brothers, a lot of sisters be like, I would never, I would never do this, I would never. In the world, ain't no telling what you'll do. The devil get his hands on you and he'll turn you inside out. You won't even realize that you done got flipped. You wanna, I, I, I guarantee you half them rappers that are sweet, sweet peas, they don't even, they don't even realize they, they gay. Satan knows you better than you know yourself. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, Satan knows you better than you know yourself. That's why the scriptures tell you examine yourself daily. You don't know what you deal with until that situation uh, presents itself. Bring it out. So yeah, we laugh and you know what happened to the brother and the sister, but be be mindful it can happen to any of us. That's why you got to be mindful who you around, what communications, what things you watch, and what you let your kids watch, because it'll hit that switch and psh, devil jump on you. Get Jeremiah, go ahead. Get the scripture you just said. Uh, examine yourself daily. Um, because brothers, sisters also, you got to realize that a lot of people say, I'm in the truth. That's just like a lot of people in the world say that they're Christians, but that don't mean they actually follow Christ. So a lot of us 
We say we're in the truth, but that don't really mean we're in the truth. Read that for me. It's the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. You got to examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Because just because you're reading this Bible don't mean you're in the faith. Just because you have fringes on doesn't mean you're in the faith. Read on. Prove your own self. So we read in Sirach 6 and 7 that you must prove a friend. The Bible now is telling you to prove yourself. So how do you prove yourself? What do you use to prove yourself? By sure. Who got their hand up? Nope, not you. Victor. Yeah, it's spiritual hand was up. Got it. Read the verse. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. So you have to examine yourself and prove yourself. How do you examine yourself? What do you use to examine yourself? What do you use to prove yourself? Mm -hmm. So the proving of yourself is, is the evidence is in the Bible. When you read in the Bible, you should be checking off, okay, I'm doing this correctly or I'm doing this incorrectly. Here's the thing that I'm going to correct myself with. So read it again. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. So you have to examine yourself whether you're actually in this faith or not, and you're going to do that by using the Bible. Read. Prove your own self. Know ye not your own self? So you should know yourself better than anyone else. Now the reason I wanted to finish that off is when it comes to correction, right, and, and reproof, you're the first line of defense of correcting and reproving yourself. It shouldn't have to get to the leadership and go all the way up and then it's a public class on live broadcast to get corrected. You have the tool right here in front of you to prove yourself and correct your own self. That's right. You had a question, brother? No. I was saying, uh, they just started themselves. They know the truth the law is the margin. And I'll tell you why. Jeremiah 17 and 9. I'll tell you why. Because our first mistake, our biggest mistake, every time, is we listen. <laughs> you are the first uh, line of defense. If you're in this Bible, listen to this Bible. This Bible is supposed to be our mind. But a lot of times we go off, and this is why. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. What's the heart? What's that talking about? The mind. The mind is deceitful above all things. Why? Because your mind will tell you you ain't going off. Your mind will tell you, just like a brother on his way to, to, the, to the sister's house, talking about it's... 9 30 at night, somebody going over to teach the scriptures. <laughs> His mind is telling him, Yeah, I'm gonna go over it, you know. He know he's feeling away, but he's like, Yeah, I'm gonna go over and teach the scriptures. I ain't gonna do nothing. I ain't gonna do nothing, self. And that bitch will be doing self. I ain't gonna do nothing. We're gonna really go over and teach the scriptures. Yeah, we're gonna teach the scriptures. Yeah, self. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah, right. Teach this. Two weeks later, they won't stand scriptures. up talking about, Yeah, we married. <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> what happened? What? Read on. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Our minds are desperately wicked. Our minds are tell us that it's okay to go and hang out with our old buddies and whatnot. Even though the scriptures say evil communication corrupt good manners, even though the scriptures say that they will corrupt us, even though the scriptures say can two walk together, at least they agree, our mind will tell us it's okay to talk to them, it's okay to go to the party, go over and hang out. I know it was it was Christmas two weeks, her birthday was two weeks ago or whatever, and we didn't hang out, and she feel bad about it, so I'm going to just go over and hang out with her or whatever. You're going over to hang out with her and celebrate her birthday. Y'all know, people be celebrating birthdays, and it's truth. They just do it a few days later. It's like the Passover. You know, if you miss the Passover, you got another month that you can keep the Passover in. They be doing that with birthdays, and it's truth. It'll be a few days later. It's my cousin's birthday. You, we usually kick it every every birthday. They do something for me. I do something for them. Now I'm in the truth, and I didn't hang out with them. I'm going to go over a week later. Hey, girl, you going over to celebrate? You going over because you missed the that birthday. That the only holiday. They try to do quite a bit of them. Like yeah, that. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. But the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Nobody. We don't know our hearts. That's why we got to lean not on our own understanding. We got to stay in this. We got to be able to be around each other and counsel with each other. 
And the only way to do that is we got to see each other often. Malachi 3.16, did we ever read that? Let's get it. We got to see each other and speak with each other often. Not just on the Sabbath. One day a week ain't going to get it. Hell, people with alcohol uh, problems or whatever, they speak to the AA representatives more than y'all speak to each other. They speak to their sponsor more than, you know what I'm saying? Come on, we got to we gotta do better when it comes to this. Cause why? Because God is looking. This is one of the things when he opens up our book, when he opens up the book of life and he got the two books, he said he's going to open up your book, then he's going to open up the book of life. And he's going to be looking at the Bible and looking at you. One of the things that he's going to be looking for is this. Read that. It's the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 16. That's why I'm going to tell you it's important for us to communicate with each other, for us to build bonds with each other, pull close to each other throughout the week, throughout the month. Not just one day. Read. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. Those of you that fear God. How many of y'all fear God? I know I do. Ain't no hands up over here. Mm. I feel I fear God a lot. How many of y'all fear him a lot? Like up here, fear him. Y'all really fear him. Like y'all can't even stretch no more. Goodness. The Lord looking like, yeah, the sisters don't really fear him. Really. <laughs> that look like that picture. Look, you know how white Jesus be doing? He be like this. <laughs> yeah. Don't raise your hand like white Jesus. Put up like you really mean it. Read that. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. It says, and the Lord hearkened and he heard it. The Most High is listening. He's paying attention to us. Do we fear him? Are we communicating with each other? Are we gathering ourselves together? And then what? And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. It says, and finish it, I'm sorry. And a book of remem remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. And that thought upon his name. You see that a book, not only is he listening, but he's writing it down in our book. Yeah. Mama Part Yah be speaking to these sisters a lot. She be on it. But that one sister right there, she don't never pick up the phone. And you got a lot of pages in your book. And you need to have more pages of, of good remembrance than, than bad ones. You don't want to have 97 pages of all bad stuff in three three good pages. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. What I have you holding in uh, Revelations 3? It's important. It's a reason that he, he tells us to communicate. It's a reason that he tells us to communicate because that's where our strength is. That's where our power is going to be at. In communication with each other and holding each other accountable. Because when we're around each other, one of the reasons, I'm going to tell you, one of the reasons that we're not communicating is because we got secret lives we got stuff that we don't want other people to know about us, and we're sneaky. Basically, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just keep it real. We're sneaky. What was you about to say? You know, you mentioned the the AA group, right? Mm -hmm. The thing that is great about the AA group is they hold each other accountable and they're willing to talk with each other about their problems. Right. You know, and the thing that we don't do very well before we come into the truth, especially, is hold each other accountable. You know, in the Christian church. No one cares if you sin. There's no corrective action. There's no reproof and correction. Well, well, we all fall short. Nobody. Glory to the Lord. Amen, brother. But but the thing about us as brothers and sisters is each one of us should look at each other in a way that says, I don't want my brother or sister to sin because I know that death is coming for them if they do. That's the real love. If you love somebody, you wouldn't want them to sin because you don't want them to die. Yeah, absolutely. I use this analogy all the time. Real quick. I use this analogy all the time. If you see your, your brother walking or, or running, riding a bike. Let's say riding a bike. You're riding a bike just as happy as he can be. And you got one person that's saying, hey, hey, stop. Stop, man. It's a, it's a cliff over there. You're going to fall. And he's saying, don't tell. You can't tell me nothing. You don't know Only nothing about nothing. Only God can judge me. <laughs> stop. Hey, brother, stop for real, man. And he just keep on going. Then you got another brother that come and take off. Like, what's that one dude's name that was tackling cats for child support? You know what I'm talking about on YouTube? I 
no, he's, he's in the truth. He's in uh, Memphis. Y'all ain't know it, did y'all? Hey, dude, y'all ain't seen the, the YouTube with the brother that he be like, hey, you so and so. Yeah, your chest was true. He have on football gear and he just, and he just tackled. I'm surprised he ain't get shot yet. Captain Hoshai had to tell him stop it for somebody kidding you. But um, but you see another brother, <laughs> you see another brother on the bike. You see a brother on the bike and then another brother come and just knock him off of it. Boom and drag him to the edge and say, look, which one of them really loved the brother? The one that's gonna give him this strong rebuke. That's us. That's how we gotta know each other and the. The only way we're able to take it, the reason I say it is the only way we're able to take that strong rebu rebuke is if we know each other. Remember in the world, your mama, your sister, your cousin, y'all can get into arguments, they can tell you your feet stink, your breath stink, y'all still be cool. <laughs> in here, a little bit of a little bit of strife in here be ripping us apart. I'm offended. Matthew 18, please. Yeah, exactly. They be like, Matthew 18, he told me that my spaghetti was nasty on the Sabbath. <laughs> Your brother in the world can tell you you don't like it. Your spaghetti stink, and you be cool. That's my brother. There ain't nobody to do nothing to him. But in here, because we only see each other every once in a while, it's like we can't get away with that type of stuff. And yeah, as you said, do we really love each other? Are we really one body? It can be fixed if your answer is no. Well, I quit. You can fix it personally, and if you fix it, you fix it, you fix it, you fix it. Everybody's thinking about fixing it within themselves. What happens is that body starts strengthening up and getting tight, and we really become that one unit. But a lot of us in here are on the fence. They, we in here, but we really ain't in here. We kind of in it, you know, we just comfortable with that one Sabbath, or, you know what I'm saying, one day a week stuff, that four days a month stuff. We comfortable with that, you know what I'm saying? We can't get much more than that, though. And the reason is because, read that. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 3, verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, Christ said, I know your works, that you ain't neither cold nor hot. You sitting around in here, in the truth, really ain't got no works, really ain't did nothing. Every one of you, I'm going to tell you, sisters, brothers, all of y'all should be done made a name for yourself. You reading the, in the Bible about Dorcas. She made a name for herself. Sister died, and they was like, look at the stuff that she did. Look at this. It's, oh, my goodness. It's, uh, sisters, y'all supposed to have that spirit. The Proverbs 31 woman spirit is not one of one that just sits back and observes and tries to look cute and don't do nothing. It's the one that's in the mix. Israelite sisters, remember, our sisters back in, the, in our history, our sisters would jump in, 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 in action and chop somebody's head off. Those was our sisters. They didn't sit back and just try to look cute all the time. They was cute. But that ain't now that was. You know, you, you you don't want to be the brother or sister that, you remember at the uh, Christian church, you do the funeral, you had a eulogy. You ain't got nothing good to say about this person. Right. Well, hey, we watch football together. Yeah. I ain't going to have no football buddy no more. <laughs> have I'm something to be an issue about. Read that again. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. God said, I know your works, which you ain't doing. You ain't cold nor hot. You ain't, you ain't cold because you still doing a little something. You showing up every week or whatever. So I ain't gonna say you cold. You do when you're on the list to bring something, you'll bring it, you know, you ain't cold. But you ain't hot neither because that's all you do. Don't nobody in there know you. Don't nobody in the congregation. I'm trying to write a book of remembrance about you and how many times you spoke, you ain't spoke to nobody. You barely shall own me. You neither cold nor hot. Read. I would thou work cold or hot. Christ said, I would, I would rather you was cold or hot. Pick one. Be one or the other. Don't be in, don't be in here playing because remember, the scriptures say that the most high's eyes are what? 10,000 times brighter than the sun. It ain't like you're going to sneak in and show up every Sabbath and think, that, yeah, I'm in. I got my ticket. You know what I'm saying? Like Willy Wonka or something. Like you're going to come in with the golden ticket because you show up every, every Sabbath. But you don't do nothing else. Cold nor hot. Ain't putting in no extra effort to do nothing. Ain't volunteering for nothing. You know, a lot of times in promotion for you brothers, the ones that get promoted, and how many brothers done fell out of the out of the congregation because they got passed over for promotion? Mm. Like, are you serious? The ones that get promoted are the ones that are the first responders, the ones that step up first. You ain't gotta ask them. The ones that every time something's going on, it's like at first on, you know what I'm saying, okay, I see the brother. Who's that brother right there? It's your brother right the strikes with the with the What's that? Doing all the yeah. work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next event. Damn, the brother again. The brother's here in time. Next event. Damn. Hey, brother, come here. Next event. All right, we need to make his brother soldier. He's trying to do the work. 
That's how we promote. That's how, because you showing that you want to do the Lord's work. That brother's on fire. Every time I look up, there he is. Who's that sister always doing? She's, man, you can't, is she on the committee now? She ain't on nothing. She always, she ain't on nothing. She just be back there. She helping. That's a sister named Eliza in um, Dallas. Dark Sands sister. That's how she is. Passover, everybody trying to look cute. She's in the back, gloves on. Like, how you get back here? I'm here to work. I'm like, dang, sister's on point. She going to make sure that her election is sure. That's how we got to be. But the scriptures say that I know that works. You neither cold nor hot. I would rather that you was either cold or hot. Because if you're cold, you know, at least the people ain't going to be sad when I put you to death because I am going to put you to death. If you was hot, I don't, you got a ticket. At least we, you know. But you neither. It says, I know that you're neither cold nor hot. I would rather that you was either. Read. Verse 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, because you want to play, this is what I'm going to do. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Say, Christ said, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. You're better off just not coming around. But how do we avoid that? We avoid that by pulling close to each other, communicating with each other, counseling with each other. Some brothers and sisters hate that. They do not want to pull close because they don't want nobody to tell them about their mess. Who is that? Man, we putting uh, oh, Soldier Galad on security. You see how he jumped up? He about to Kung Fu kick his sister. <laughs> hey. I know I'm safe over here with you. Yeah, like turn the chair that way. Yeah. But you was quick, though. Yeah. Quick. Hey, get verse 19. Verse 19. Book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Mm. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. It says, as many as I love, so Christ is saying, the ones that I love, I rebuke them, and I chasten them. But also it's saying, be zealous, and therefore repent. We just read that it says, don't be lukewarm. So it's telling you what is the opposite of being lukewarm is being zealous. Meaning you got uh, all type of quick action and desire to be doing the things that the Lord needs you to do. Um, so part of your repentance is being zealous. If you find yourself without that zeal that, that brothers talk about, that's something you have to work on as a part of your repentance. Because that's the ones that the, that the Most High loves. He's going to rebuke you. He's going to chastise you. But he needs you to be zealous in your repentance. Okay? So not lukewarm. Not cold. Just hot. That's all he's looking for is hot. Okay? And that takes work. I'm going to tell you, it takes work. Like you said, it's something that you actually have to work at. Sisters, I know it would be a lot with y'all that y'all like, ah, but I got this, but I got that. But be honest. If it was something that you really want to do, you'll make time. People make time. Just like come every holy day, come Passover, everybody says that they broke. I'm going to tell you, Passover be showing who people are. Everybody come Passover is broke as a joke. I can't, the, the fees are too high, the hotel's too high, this is too high, that's too high. Then they get there, like, man, this really broke me down. Come Black Wall Street, they got five bags. Oh, I want one of them, and I want one of them. But like, hold up. I thought you was broke as a joke. They got five bags, where they at? They ain't at the hotel, where they at? They had, What's the name of a restaurant eating every other day? Dang, I thought they was broke. Like, come on, man. Stop fooling yourself. Same way in here, we make excuses why we can't come together. Make excuses why we can't make it. We can make it. We can do better. We can come together. We just got to do it. I'm telling you, the safety is, is in us doing that. Get uh, Sirach. I mean, not Sirach, excuse me. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. 4. Yeah. Just quick one. Four and nine. It's the book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible. Chapter four, verse nine. Two are better than one. The scriptures tell us two are better than one. Christ said, where two or more gathered together in my name, there am I also. That's the startings of a church. That's how we start building up a congregation. Two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Mm-hmm. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. It says if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Remember when I first started, I said everything that we do affects each other. Like this right here. When we fall, if one of us falls, it's the other one's job to love our brother, our sister enough to where we lift them up. 
Now, if you fall and we don't know why you fail, we you fall into some old some old stuff that you catch everybody by surprise. Like they was going through that. Who knew? Nobody. You got brothers that'll come in and be like, "Yeah, I need some help on my rent." All right, brother, yeah, we do whatever we got to do. How much you owe? Six thousand. <laughs> How much is your rent? Six hundred a month. <laughs> you been behind for ten months? I, what? Yeah, I know. Yeah, communicate, brother. Yeah, I know. Six months later, I'm behind again. Like I said earlier, don't wait for the to start talking and asking for help after you already knee deep. You know, don't wait for the council until it's too late. Now, if we in advance. exactly now, if we hung around each other, if we spent time with each other, if we talked more often, if we was more comfortable with each other. You'd be comfortable enough to tell me, yeah, I'm struggling right now, man. I can't really pay my rent. Oh, really, Dad? Brother, let me figure out. Uh, let me figure out what I can do for you. Hey, your brother can't really pay his rent or whatever. Let's take up a collection or whatever. Keep you from getting behind that far. Remember when you said at the beginning, uh, the decisions we make affect everybody else. Absolutely. Now, how much easier is it to help, you know, a couple hundred dollars with somebody's rent than it is to help when they got the eviction notice, when they car already being repoed? Yeah, the car's on the back of the tow truck. They tell me, hey, brother, I need some help. I need it in 30 seconds. Because you know what? A, a lot of brothers and sisters that need help, it's on Friday, right before the Sabbath. Now, how much of a burden is it for us to to try to help you when we're already trying to scramble before the Sabbath. Give us some lead time. Give us a week to get it together. You get what I'm saying? Had Absolutely. Question, Who had a question? Um, what's the brother's name? Victor. Victor. Stand up so everybody can hear you. It wasn't quite a question, sir, but it was more like they don't want to tell you because they already messed it up. They probably don't want to let nobody know. Right, because they embarrassed. Yeah, yeah. And which is, it, absolutely, that's, that's exactly right. But which embarrassment is worse? Exactly. <laughs> They embarrassed them to tell you that they in some trouble, and then they get kicked out. Now that's really embarrassing. Now your stuff's in the front yard. But that's exactly it's because they embarrassed, and why is because we ain't spend enough time with each other. Because it ain't as embarrassing if this is my brother. Like me, if I'm in some kind of, and you know me, if I'm going through something, am I gonna tell you straight up? Because I talk to him every day, every single day. Me and him talk. Every other day, me and uh, Uzziah talk. Every day, me and Bishop talk. Every day I'm, I'm talking to the brothers that are in my immediate circle and they all are in this circle. They all are part of the body every day. So if I'm going through something, if he's going through something, we're going to tell each other. Hey, man, this is what's going on. My wife's getting on my nerves. She's been being in it. <laughs> I'm laughing at you or whatever, but we brothers, we in it. Same way it would be if it was your brother in the world. <laughs> it's going to be kind of carnal or whatever, but you're going to tell your brother, hey, man, I got burnt. That's embarrassing. But you know, your brother got your back. Why is to do evil? We'll do that in the world, but in here we won't even tell each other we need help with the bills. Because we're embarrassed. And because we haven't made those brotherhood, those sisterly bonds. And I'm saying we need to do better at that. Continue where we was at. Uh, verse 10. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falls. It says woe to him. Another, another meaning for woe is destruction. It's going to be bad for you. It says, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he have not another to help him up. Woe to him that is alone when he falls because he don't have somebody to help him up. Woe to him that is alone because he don't have a counselor. Because he won't take no advice from nobody. Because he's too caught up in himself or she's too caught up in herself that she won't let nobody in to understand what's going on with her. Won't let nobody in to help her or him get over that sin that they're dealing with. And a lot of it is really, it, it goes, it always goes back to sin because it's something hidden and I, what's wrong with this mic? Why is it that going like that? You hear it? Take it down a little bit. Mic check, mic check, that's better. Because we, we don't want somebody to come and see the sin that we got going on. The little thing that we're struggling with, that's what we're trying to hide. Every time, that's what it is. Read on. Verse 11. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a three-four cord is not quickly broken. And what, what can you do in that situation with the two and the three and the group or the body? It's counsel in those situations. But our people hate counsel. 
Uh, people hate being told what to do. They do not want to hear it. Don't tell me nothing. I'm grown. And that's our downfall. That's our downfall. Get Surat 21 and 6. Uh-uh, you can't tell me nothing. Uh, everybody got that Kanye spirit. It's the book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach in the Apocrypha, chapter 21, verse 6. Hey, am I old? Do people still listen to Kanye West? Um, I don't know. I think not listen to him. Oh, that's my last song I know of, bro. He in the sunken place. He's in the sunken place? <laughs> Dang. He done flipped out. He got blonde hair, I heard. <laughs> Read that. Uh, hey, I saw Kanye West on the Ellen DeGeneres show. It looked like he uh, took a roofie or something. <laughs> Did y'all see that? Ain't nobody see that? I saw it. I saw it. They got contacts. What's wrong with him? Out. White people, the white the people. Sunken place. That's, that's for real. It's a real place. Mess them Edomites women. Women they gave them the crazies. Yep. They got him. What, what is she? Oh, she's Edom. Uh, she's Her? Edomite, but she's from like uh, one of them Turkey Damn. around Turkey. Yeah. She's the devil. Uh, hey, her sister, they, they the destroyer of black people. They the destroyer of black men. Every black man get one of them. They, they, it's over. The KKK. Yeah, it's over. Three days. Read. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 21, verse 6. He that hateth to be reproved is in the way of sinners. And when you hate correction, when can't nobody tell you nothing, you might not realize it, but you're in the way of sinners. That's how the world is. That's their ways. If can't nobody tell you nothing, can't nobody come and tell you about yourself, then you're in the way of sinners. If you wrong and can't nobody tell you nothing, then you are in the way of sinners. You do not love your brother. You will not allow the commandments to be applied to you. You are in the way of sinners. You're trying to hide your stuff. Can't nobody tell you. You are in the way of sinners. You hate correction. The way of sinners. Read. But he that feareth the Lord will repent from his heart. He that feareth the Lord will repent from his heart. He that feareth the Lord communicates with his brothers and sisters. And they don't try to hide their sins. They don't try to hide their shortcomings. He that feared the Lord, his brother and sister know what's going on with him. A two-strand cord is not easily broken. A three-strand cord is not easily broken. Meaning you're not going to fall. Why? Because you got a support system. You fear the Lord. You got counselors around you all the time. Everybody that you talk to, when they see something. That's another thing, too. And sisters are good at this. I'm going to tell you, and I tell my wife this all the time. I tell a few sisters this all the time. A couple brothers, too. You know when you're going through something, people can see it. Where is this the scripture? You know when you're going through something, people can see that you be having the devil on you. People try to cover it up as if they don't uh, uh, change his countenance. Uh, get Sirach 37. Hold that. Get Sirach 37 and 17. Yeah, that's it. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 37, verse 17. The countenance is a sign of changing of the heart. You see that? The countenance is a sign of the changing of the heart. Brothers, what does that mean? The countenance is a sign of changing of the heart. I need somebody new. Now, you already answered a few questions. Big, uh, Evan. Evan. It's kind of like... Um, Close to my mind is the way that you feel reflected on your face. They say what? The way that you feel reflected on your face. Exactly. Sisters are good at this. Y'all have a mean mug. Y'all have y'all face all screwed up. And somebody asks you, what's wrong? No, I'm okay. Ain't nothing wrong with you. First off, I want to I wanna tell y'all something, just in case y'all didn't know. When y'all do that, you know what y'all doing? Y'all are lying. You have a lying devil on you when you do that. What's wrong with you? Why are you acting like nothing ain't nothing wrong with me? But a lot of times they're doing it, so you ask them. Yeah, I know mean, that's exactly what the pity boy. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing wrong with me. It is something wrong with you. You don't act like that. Nothing ain't nothing wrong with me. Uh, or that's the way for them to show their displeasure without actually saying the words out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. Let you know that they upset Throw that quiet, meek spirit out the window. Forget that. But read that again. The countenance is a sign of changing of the heart. The countenance, the way you look, is a sign of the changing of the heart. And hey, let me give you a quick precept on that. Get, Go ahead, get Genesis uh, 4 and 6. 
just to give you an example of how your countenance shows on your real well and the Lord see right through you and, and men will be able to do the same. Uh, start at verse 5. It's the book of Genesis. Hold on, let me get it. Oh, Go ahead. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So you can see that, that Cain was angry because his, uh, because his offering was not accepted. Read on. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? So, so Cain didn't say, I'm mad. The Lord could see it in his face that he was angry, he was upset. So he said, Why has thy countenance fallen? Why have you changed your demeanor? You went from being in the spirit to out of the spirit. Read. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrong? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? Read that part again. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? The reason people countenance falls is because they're not doing well. You know, they're not being accepted because they didn't do the right thing. Read on. And if thou doest not well, sin life at the door. Mm -hmm. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So, you know, when it comes to the fact that your countenance is falling, it's generally around the fact that you weren't doing the right thing in the first place. Now you're ashamed, now you feel some type of way that you got your card pulled, that you've been found out, that you've been seen in what you're doing. In order, uh, the easy way to keep your countenance where it needs to be is by keep the commandments. Now, uh, were you done in, in the verse that you was in? In Sirach 37? Yeah, go ahead. I want to also go to, uh, I want to go to Proverbs 6.23. Because we were talking about reproof and instruction, right? Re well, we were talking about reproof. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, read uh, Sirach 21 and 6 and then go to, um, Proverbs 6 23. Hold Sirach because we're going to be back here. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 21, verse 6. He that hateth to be reproved is in the way of sinners. So there are some people who hate being reproved. They hate the fact that someone is going to correct them according to the Bible. That person is in the way of sinners because they don't want to be corrected of their sin. They want to continue in their sin. Hey, I'm going to tell you something too, real quick. That, it just When you said that, it just reminded me of something. That's one of the reasons that people only show up on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. It was something that you said, were they Sunday, Sunday morning Christians? Yeah, we Sabbath Israelites at that time. Sabbath Israelites. Same thing. It's because you don't want to hear the scriptures. You don't want to hear the correction every time. They keep on getting cut. Come in here and get cut week after week. <laughs> like, man, every time I come in, I get cut. You start feeling like, man, he talking about me. Somebody told him my business. I hate when <laughs> You don't like that feeling. It's actually a good feeling. All you got to do is correct the stuff that's wrong, and then you can not have that feeling no more. You be the one in there looking around to see who's getting cut. <laughs> Somebody in here getting cut. It ain't talking about me. That, that's like a cancer patient that's tired of chemo. They're like, I just want to go home and die. You're Ooh. tired of getting the medicine. Ooh. You just want to go home and die. You don't want to hear these scriptures cut you. Ooh, man. That was rough. <laughs> You're right. Damn. Bring it out. So with that being said, he that hated reproof is in the way of sinners. Now go ahead and uh, Proverbs 6.23. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and the reproofs of instructions are the way of life. So the reproofs of instruction are the way of life. You need the reproofs of instruction. You need to be reproved to live. If you choose not to take the reproof, you're choosing to take death. Mm -hmm. It says reproofs of instructions are the way of life. We know that the wages of sin is death. You don't want to be reproved. You want to walk in the way of sinners. You're choosing to die, just like the cancer patient. Yep. Absolutely. So if we really want, if we really want this uh, life, if we really want uh, eternal life, we we must love the reproof because this is the only way to get it. So go back for you. Yeah, the reproof. I'm telling you, it's just like that. That pain that comes with the reproof is just like the pain that comes with. Working out. Mm -hmm. Tear the muscles down. You tear the muscles down to build them back up. And at the end of it, there's a reward. You get better. You know, stuff that was hard for you at first ain't hard for you no more. 
Stuff that was that was that was burdensome for you at first, it's not burdensome for you no more. Stuff that you were struggling with at first, you're not struggling with it no more. You took the reproof, you brought it forward, you let people know that this is what you was dealing with. You pulled close to the to the to the uh, brothers and sisters, and now it's it's easier for you to navigate around that. And that's how we all got to be because when it's all said and done, it's gonna be a new brother, Lord willing, he spare our life, or Christ come, which I hope Christ come back soon. But we still got work to do, so. But Lord willing, he spread out our life, and everybody in here is here next year. And it's going to be a bunch of new faces that come in. And for all of y'all that's in here next year, the year after, when them new faces come in, they should be able to come to y'all and be like, Dang, y'all overcame that? Y'all overcame that? Why y'all so close? Why y'all so... If y'all still sitting in the same seat, doing the same thing, listening to the same class, getting cut the same way, bunch of open wounds all on you, won't close up because you ain't coming to get the medicine, then shame on you. Shame on you. Y'all still having the issues. Y'all got it still that y'all won't bring y'all food for the Sabbath. Y'all forgot the macaroni. Y'all still got the same junk going on. Y'all ain't overcame nothing and grew in no way, form, or fashion. And shame on you. But in everything we do, we do for the person next to us. Don't do it for yourself. Do it for your sisters. Do it for these kids. It's going to grow up. It's going to need right examples of men. Do it for these kids. It's going to grow up and need right examples of sisters. Don't do it for yourself. Do it for each other. Do it for the body. What does that say? I mean, we just have to be considerate of one another. Like, you know, you talk about people who don't bring their food. You got people in here that you don't know if, if they've even had a meal today. You've had three meals already today, got snacks galore, but you don't know if your brother or your sister then came in and it's going to be the only good meal that they've had all week. Right. Y'all see Mesa over here. She's be hungry. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I caught you eating. I'm sorry, sis. You know. <laughs> I love you. But he's exactly right. Yeah, make sure you bring the food, make sure you make the jig is up. <laughs> Y'all see over there turning up the sandwich? But exactly though, we gotta make sure that we're looking out for each other. It ain't just about us. You better say something. Yeah. Y'all y'all looking at the Israelites right now. That brother sitting or sister sitting next to you is an Israelite, it's a son of God or a daughter of God. You should be happy and honored to sit next to that brother or sister. So you should want to draw it near him. You should want to get to know him. Mm -hmm. We the most famous people walk the face of the earth. Y'all in the world would get so happy when you see a celebrity, see Kevin Hart, see all these rappers, these NBA players. Y'all looking at the princes of God, the sons of God, every Sabbath. So you should want to be around each other. You should be honored to be around each other. That should make you want to say, you know what, let me bring my food for the Sabbath. Let me do what I got to do. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not doing it for men. I'm not doing it for myself. I'm doing it for the Lord and his children. Think about that. Think about the spiritual role in that. Yeah, y'all should be thinking about each other. I'm telling you, the, the leadership, and I know, we think about y'all all the time. Throughout the week, we constantly thinking about what's going on in here. We think that not just here. We got congregations everywhere. My phone don't stop. But we also, we are we always thinking about each other. We're thinking about the congregation. My life revolves around the church, period. If I'm gone, if y'all don't see me 99.9% .9 of the time because I'm at another church, but everybody got on purple. And all the sisters being there once a week taking the purple selfies. And, and that's the problem, Captain. They look at it as church. They don't look at this as life. Right. They don't look at this as life. We're commanded to come fellowship on the Sabbath. But this ain't like church where we just come in here because our, our, our grandmother's pulling us here. Mm -hmm. Our mama's pulling us here. No, we're commanded to come here. We're commanded to fellowship here together. But and y'all know we go to lights every day. And y'all know that what, what Christ was talking about, I'm sorry, what Christ was talking about when he said the lukewarm or whatever, that's just coming here going through the motions. The lukewarm is just coming in, going through the motions, thinking if I do this, then I know I'm going to get in. I'm not going to give my all. If I do this, I know I'm going to get in. I'm going to get in if I just come in every Sabbath or whatever and put my, iron up my fringes and come in and, and chill out for a minute. And, hey, it's my, my friend, I come in and do a couple of leave back. Do hey. back. How, many, how many brothers over here? About, how many brothers is that? About 30? Yeah. Do about 30 of these. Hey, some people just I mean, want the attendance, you know? I want to make sure they got their, their perfect attendance. Yeah. But they quick to run out after they get that credit. Mm-hmm. But that's a lukewarm spirit. Y'all can't have it. Y'all can't have that. Y'all can't have that. They support. The scriptures say the righteous shall scarcely be what? Saved. Y'all know the scripture? Pull the scripture. Y'all can't just come in and, uh, where's the scripture at? 
Y'all can't just come in every once in a while and think that y'all gonna get it. Christ said, you lukewarm. I can't, I can't deal with I can't deal with the lukewarm. I'm not First dealing Peter with it. First Peter 4 18. I can't deal with the lukewarm. Christ said you're lukewarm, so I ain't messing with you. I'm gonna spew you out of my mouth. I'm gonna give you the scripture to show what he's talking about when he when the time comes when Christ spews you out of his mouth. Ah right, man, let's give you the bubble guts. I'm telling you, I don't want to be in this one. But read that real quick for the brother. It's where it's the called book, it? The book of First Peter, chapter 4, verse 18. First Peter's 4, 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? It says the righteous is going to scarcely be saved. Christ said, let's pair that with Christ said, the word says that there's a book of remembrance for every time that we speak with each other. The Most High is looking at if we, if we are speaking with each other often, and then how are we speaking with each other? Because it's a way to speak to each other and it ain't righteous when mm. you speaking and then you gossiping and doing all that old mess. Murmuring Don't get murmuring and tail bearing, bite, backbiting, lying, all that old junk. Probably y'all should spend a while all over, sir. That, that thing is over. There's a way to speak where it, it'll get you in trouble. But there's a book of remembrance open and he's looking to see if we speaking with each other. And then he said, if you ain't, if, if you ain't all in, then he gonna spew you out of your mouth, out of his mouth. Then read that. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So we supposed to be the righteous. If we gonna scarcely be saved, now why would we scarcely be saved? Why? Because a lot of us in here really ain't in it for real. We kind of in it. You can't tell us nothing though. Don't tell me nothing about my personal life. It's only when I'm here that you can, you know, I play the whole all that when I'm here. The all that when I'm here, but outside of that, when I'm out there, you can't tell me nothing. That ain't none of your business. This ain't your business. That ain't your business or whatever till something go wrong. You look warm. You really ain't on fire. Now watch this. He said the righteous shall scarce, scarcely be saved. And the lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Get Matthew 7. This is when Christ is, this is the, the point when Christ is going to come and spew you out of his mouth. And watch, I'm going to show you how it's talking about us. It's talking about the so-called righteous. Matthew 7 and 21. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Now, hold on. Now, at this time, this is Christ is coming back, right? And he's standing before you. He's black. Now, who's going to be calling that black man with the woolly hair, Lord, Lord? The Israelites. The Edomites, they ain't going to be saying that. They're going to be, oh, God. Darn it, look at that bitch black man. It's a nigger. Oh my gosh, he's black. They ain't gonna be saying it. They gonna be in a hole somewhere trying to hide themselves. The 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 the, the Christian church Negroes, they ain't gonna be saying it. Because they waiting on Caesar Bolger to come back. So they ain't gonna be saying it. They ain't gonna be standing before the black Messiah stuff to my Lord, Lord. They ain't gonna be saying it. They gonna be hiding and crying somewhere. So it's talking about us, those of us that say we in the faith. Us Israelite brothers and sisters. It says, many, it says, not everyone that said to me, read, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. It says, not everybody that say to me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father. What's the will of the Father? Who knows? Right here in the back. What's your name, brother? I'm sorry. Daniel. Daniel, stand up. What's the will of the Father? Keep the commandments. You know the scripture? Uh, yeah, that, that's not quite it, but the answer's right. Just the scripture ain't on. Right here. Psalms 40 and 8. Psalms 40 and 8. Read that real quick. Hold that. Because it seems fair enough, easy enough. We keep the commandments. We all keep the commandments, right? Try our best. We stumble a little bit, but we keep the commandments. Psalms 40 and 8. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 40 and verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. So the will of God is to have the law in our heart. Not just so we can store it there, but so we can actually perform the things written therein. So the will of God is that we keep his commandments. All right, let's go back. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 7 and verse 22. 21. 21. Not everyone that, sa that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So those that keep the commandments. Christ said, everybody that come to me saying, Lord, Lord, 
ain't gonna enter into the kingdom. But them that do the commandments of my Father, which is in heaven, those, they gonna enter the kingdom. Read on. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in said, thy name? Said many gonna come to me. Christ said many are gonna come to me that day. The ones that so-called keep the commandments saying, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name when we on the corner? Sisters, wasn't we giving out flyers? Wasn't we doing all this in your name, Lord? Black Jesus, wasn't we doing it? <laughs> Read. And in thy name have cast out devils. In thy name, did we cast out devils? We told the white man, he the damn devil in your name. In the name of Jesus, you the devil. The Bible speaks of. Read. And in thy name, done many wonderful works. And we done many wonderful works in your name. We brought people in off the street, see how the church done grew. We brought all these pretty purple chairs in your name. Made this desk. Read. And then will I profess unto them. Christ said he gonna look you dead in your eyes and say what? I never knew you. Man, you only came to the, to, you only fellowship once a week. You was lukewarm. You was always talking to Bobo and them, your cousins and them. You, you went to the birthday. I know it was two weeks later, but you were celebrating. Don't try to act like you wasn't. You had some cake. You had some cake. You never really came around. Didn't nobody really know you like that. Never put your brick in. You was in the truth. Brother, you was in the truth for 10 years, so-called. too busy. And you never got past the member stage. Yeah, right. He said, I'll look at him and say, what? Verse 23. And then what I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Ye that work iniquity. You still got that in uh, Sirach? Sirach 21. 21 and uh, 6. Yes. Read that. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 21, verse 6. He that hated to be reproved is in the way of sinners. Christ going to look at you and be like, you never would take correction. You never sought counsel. You hated to be reproved. You just like a sinner. You was lukewarm. Depart from me. I never knew you. You work iniquity. What did I do? I did all these mighty works. Yeah, you never fellowshiped. You forsake the assembly. The only time you showed up is when it was the Sabbath of some free food or something or a big event like Passover. Could nobody correct you? Could nobody get in your business? You ain't want your, you ain't love your brothers enough to confess your faults one to another and be healed. You wasn't operating in the truth. You was lukewarm, wasted your life. You could have been out there booty popping and drinking popping bottles and doing all that stuff. Because you gonna get the same judgment day. Was you look where the booty? The booty poppers is over there. You that's where you going? You over there with the dope boys over there? Yeah. Bye. T D Jakes over there. Deuces, I never knew you. Depart from me. Now that would be a shame to run this whole race and realize that I didn't do everything I was supposed to do. I really wasn't in it. And it's going to take some self-examination. You're going to have to examine yourself. But read on. Uh, Ecclesiasticus. It's a rock. He that hated to be reproved is in the way of sinners. Read. But he that feareth the Lord will repent from his heart. Those of us that fear the Lord, we're going to repent from our heart. Man, we're going to do everything that we can to correct. Because, hey, we all fall short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. We all fall short. We do. Hold this real quick. Go to first, uh, first John chapter 2. Because we all mess up. We do. We ain't perfect. Saints. <laughs> Read that. Uh, verse, one. verse one. Verse one. It's the book of First John, chapter two, verse one. Uh -huh. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. It says, don't sin. Don't break God's commandments. Read. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. But if you do mess up, we got we under grace right now. We got an advocate with the Father. One that went through life like we went through it, had the same temptations that we had, so he knows what our shortcomings are, and he's righteous that he'll be merciful and go back and represent us to the Father. If we in the spirit, if we really in the spirit of trying to fix it and get ourselves right. Everybody understand that? Sure. So we got, you know, we got a propitiation, which is Christ, which is an atonement. But that's only if we're really trying to get right. It ain't so we can just keep on sinning. So we can just keep on being lukewarm. That's if we're really trying to get right. Go back to Sirach. I mean, yeah, Sirach 21. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 21, verse 7. Verse 7. 
An eloquent man is known far and near. An eloquent man is known far and near. An eloquent man, when it's talking about an eloquent man, it's talking about somebody that knows how to speak. His 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 speech is 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 cool, come easy. He's real good with his words. An eloquent man is known far and near. Read. But a man of understanding knoweth when he slippeth. But a, a man of understanding knoweth when he slippeth. And some of us that they we so we so busy talking we convince ourselves that we cool. We so busy running our mouth that we convince ourselves that we okay. We eloquent in speech. We know how to we know how to work our way around keeping you from knowing that what we got going on when really we all jacked up. But a man of understanding knows when he done slip. He knows that okay, I'm in trouble. I need to correct it. I need to shut up because I'm in sin right now. Or you got the one that will talk himself to death, literally spiritual death, because he won't shut up and admit that he got something going on with him, or she got something going on with him. Get Sirach 21 and 12. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 21, verse 12. He that is not wise will not be taught. He always talk, he always got something to say, he think he got it already under control, can't nobody tell him nothing. He that is not wise will not be taught. Read. But there is a wisdom which multiplieth bitterness. But there's a wisdom that multiplieth bitterness. Who knows what that means? Anybody? Take a shot. He's always he's always up for the challenge. Well, I'll try to do something. I love it. Oh. Um. There's a, it says, read that again, verse 12. Verse 12, he, he that is not wise will not be taught, but there is a wisdom which multiplies bitterness. There's a wisdom which multiplies bitterness. Now remember, brothers, and this is, you know what I'm saying, this is that, well, I'm, I'm about to give the answer. What, what is it? Nah. Nah. Uh, Y'all you know, hey, brothers, brothers, don't be afraid to, to answer the question, even if you get it wrong. Don't be afraid to answer the question. Right here. Right. Right. Okay, that first part. Yeah, you got that right, the first part. The one that is is that that is not wise and he can't be taught because he think he knows everything. He's too busy talking. He's too busy talking. But that last part. But but there is a wisdom which multiplies bitterness. I give you the answer. Oh, can I want? Go ahead. I was gonna say there's certain instances where you know too much for your own good. That's the first part. What about the last part? But there's a wisdom that multiplies bitterness. Like there's certain wisdom that, that you may have that's gonna multiply bitterness in the sense that, um, like what Paul said, about like I, if I had not known sin, but by the law, like you know what's wrong, so it's gonna make something bitter. Then watch this. These are two adverse statements to each other. It says, it is he, he is, read that, read that for me. He that is not wise will not be taught. He that is not wise will not be taught. Read. But there. But. Now this is a this is on the opposite spectrum. It says, but. There is a wisdom which multiplieth bitterness. Read verse 15. Verse 15. If a skillful man hear, hear a wise word, he will commend it. If a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it and add unto it. Read. But as soon as one of no understanding heareth it, the one that won't be taught, the one that's yeah. talk too much, think you know everything, pop up once a week, don't know nothing, it, think he know everything, he says what? It displeaseth him. It displeaseth him. It multiplies bitterness in him. Read. And he casteth, casteth it behind his back. And that's what we can't be. Y'all understand what that's talking about? There's a wisdom that multiplies bitterness. For the ones that talk too much, think they know everything, they don't come around, they have lukewarm, and they want to be eloquent with their speech and, 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 and chatter mouse or whatever. When somebody to step up that really got wisdom, 
and they all better. They mad. Because with they everything that they were saying now, they look stupid because it wasn't right. And now somebody done stood up and gave the true understanding and now they better. They 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 bitterness is multiplied. Drop it, get first Corinthians three and eighteen. Go ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. Because they get exposed. Is that what you said? Because they get exposed? Yeah, absolutely. They get embarrassed, basically. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 18. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. In other words, be quiet. You think you're wise in this world. It ain't always time to step up, say something. Um, just be quiet. Your worldly wisdom really has no place in God's in, in, in God's house. It has no place in God's congregation. Your worldly wisdom can't do nothing for you. It can help you at work. It can help you out on the block. There's a place for it. But in God's, in God's congregation, your worldly wisdom don't mean nothing. And everybody needs to know that. The way that you're going to replace that worldly wisdom with spiritual wisdom Come together, fellowship, get counsel, be quiet. Everybody understand? Yes, Read on. Verse 19, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Mm -hmm. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. He said, God knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. God knows your thoughts. When you think you know too much, that they are vain, you really don't know nothing. You ain't took the time to come and learn. You ain't took the time to really apply God's word. It's only certain commandments that you really apply and other ones that you put behind you. You won't counsel. And eventually, if you up in here, it's going to come back to bite you in the butt. What happens is your life catches up with you and all the stuff that you was trying to hide, one day God just says, peekaboo and shows your whole backside everything God has a way of doing it I've seen many a brother that the most high will expose him when he least expect it it means when he's at the height of his wisdom at the height of his so called wisdom think he got it all here and phew, the curtain get pulled back candle get blown out. or the candle get blown out which is worse God got a kid but we got to make sure, and the, and the way to make sure that we're not in that spirit, the reason I say all that, the reason I go into this, is I'm coming back full circle. The way, the way to make sure that we're not in that spirit is that we come together, we gather together. We're able to have checks and balances. I know that I won't fall off. Why? Because the men around me won't let me fall off. They'll see certain things and they'll start nudging at me. They'll nudge at me. Hey, some of them, depending on the personality, some of them are nudge. You know, you got that, you got that uh, cousin or whatever that, know you're doing something wrong, and they'll be like, hey, man, you know, you probably shouldn't do that. And then you got that uncle be like, boy, you know you're the devil. And you got some of them that'll nudge at you, and you got some of them that will strongly rebuke you. That's family. That's what we all have in here. A lot of y'all just don't realize it. All those different personalities and all this stuff that you that you left out in the world, you got it right here in the church. Where's that at in Matthew? I give you a hundredfold. You got it right here in the church. You got aunties, you got uncles, brothers, sisters, right here in the church. Find that for me. It's the book of Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. Three. It's the book of Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. And everyone that are forsaken houses or brethren. Everybody that have forsake houses, brethren, or friends, or what? Or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Uh huh. It says you will receive hundredfold in this truth. And how do you receive that? Right here. All that family that you give up, all those people that you don't want to, and some of you that don't want to give them up. If you just let go of them. The Most High will multiply them right here. 
And you might think, well, how are they gonna multiply right here? Now that I'm now that I'm in this truth, I'll be lonely, I ain't got nothing to do, I done cut off all my family or whatnot. Well, that's your fault because you ain't you ain't building no friendships. That's your fault. That's why you ain't got nothing to do and you're lonely or whatever, then you find yourself doing Jeremiah chapter 2 and 33. Read that real quick. This is where you find yourself. Because you will not pull close to the congregation. You won't let nobody tell you nothing. You don't want nobody to be in your business. <laughs> and this is where you end up. Jeremiah 2, 33. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 33. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. And you don't realize that you sin it twice. When you trim your ways to seek love and you hanging out with, the, with your wicked family members that still celebrating wicked holidays and all that, openly showing that they hate God, they don't know that they're showing they hate God, but you know it because you know the love of God is to keep his commandments. So that means if you don't keep his commandments, then you what? I mean, it's simple. Love is the opposite of hate. Hate is the opposite of love. Keep his commandments means love. Don't keep his commandments means hate. It's simple. They ain't doing it and you still hanging out with them. Imagine your son or your daughter, for the parents saying your son or daughter hanging out with somebody that you know hates your guts. And they know that the person hates your guts. They hanging out. They come in, oh man, I had a good time where you been at. What the dude they hate you? Hey, it's a smack in the face. Do you love me? Hey. That's how we deal with the most high. Because every uh, beast loves his life. So if, if they hate you, you probably hate them too. Mm -hmm. There's somewhere in you that you ain't fully in the mix. You look warm. You look warm. And I'm saying correct it. Let me get one. Go ahead. Uh, get Proverbs 18, 24. Because, um, you know, you brought up something that I think a lot of people struggle with. They're trying to cut off their worldly friends, but they feel like they're coming as true and can't make a friend. They have no friends in the truth. All these thousands of Israelites and in IUIC, we have no friends. Read this. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 24. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. That's it. Read it again. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. Read it in the read it one more time. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. You know, this is why the scriptures tell you to examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Because a lot of times, the reason something isn't going right for us in this truth is because of ourselves. If you want to have friends in this truth, maybe you should examine, are you friendly? Are you doing the things that would make someone want to be your friend in this truth? You know, and the things that the captain is bringing up about uh, being willing to open up to the brother and being around the body. Uh... All these different things are the things that would help you show yourself friendly, as well as being a good example in this truth of how to apply the commandments. So, you know, it's important that if you want to make friends and, and replace with the hundredfold, that you make yourself uh, a replacement for somebody else. Because we got uh, brothers and sisters in here, older men, older women, you know, that can serve as, as mothers and fathers to those who don't have. But you have to groom yourself to be that person so that you can be that person for somebody else so that in a like manner, someone else will be that person for you. Yeah, absolutely, because it's not about yourself. Jumping off what you just said, go to Sirach chapter seven, four and seven. The book of Sirach chapter four and verse seven. This is the book of Sirach chapter four, verse seven. Get thyself the love of the congregation. Y'all see that? That's an action word. Get yourself the love of the congregation. You don't sit back. You don't. You, people sit back and just wait on somebody to like you. I don't know you. Who are you? You show up every once in a while. Who are you? I don't know you for real like that. I mean, I love you because you're my brother in this truth. You're my sister in the truth. But, you know, don't just think that assume that, I mean, you ain't making yourself available every time we come together. Where you at? You ain't never here. I'll see you once a week. Don't nobody know what's going on in your life. Where you work at? Hell. Don't nobody know you. You got to get yourself the love of the congregation. That means by showing yourself friendly. That's what you just read, right? Mm -hmm. Show yourself friendly. Meaning you be in the mix. Don't be scared. Hey, Brother Sloan, most high Christ bless. What's happening with you? Sit down and strike up a conversation. Don't be scared. Sisters, I know y'all the worst at it. Mm -hmm. A lot of times y'all the worst at it. Y'all, man. Y'all sit over the cut. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. 
Why you act like that every week? I don't know if I ain't saying nothing to me. I ain't saying nothing to nobody. Me. <laughs> That's how they be, though. They be like, you ain't saying nothing to me. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. I'm Shalom. She didn't mean Shalom. She don't say nothing to me. Well, you do it first, then. You know y'all be there. That's why y'all giggling, because y'all know a sister like that. Probably the sister sitting next to you right now. That's what she did when I Bring came in. Bring it out. You ain't saying nothing to me. I ain't saying nothing. Eat my sandwich. Read that again. <laughs> get thyself the love of the congregation. Action word. You got to get the love of the congregation. Get the love of the congregation. Being like, you know, what in the world they be like, get money. They go out and try to get that. Get friendship. <laughs> what you say, huh? They got to get it. That means actively be working towards it. That means coming around, being around, fellowship, and talking to each other, reaching out to each other. Hey, I'm there. We having a fundraiser, I'm there. We having thing kids night, let me bring my kids. I'm there, what else we doing? Hey, y'all need anything? Hey, I've got this, I just wanna bring it up to the church early. Make yourself known, hey, this sister, this brother, they always doing this, they always doing that. And then that's how we do it. If everybody's doing that, just imagine how much stuff we can get accomplished. If everybody in here is on that level. Ah, oh, man, we'll take down this, this little group of people right here. The most I use 300 people to take down thousands. This little group of people right here, we'll take Austin over. If all of us get on one accord, you know how much power is in this room? If we all really in Christ, if we all really operate in what this word is saying, psh, nothing that'll stop us. That's right. And, and nothing start, that'll stop us. It starts on a small level. It small, starts with you just getting to know one brother or sister. Take it day by day. Y'all yep. build a bond, then do it with another brother, another sister, build another bond. Then that, that group that was two turns into four, five, six. Get some rock 21 and uh, 15. Sisters be killing me with that. And you know, we be up here watching too. We be seeing sisters. Like, what's wrong with her? <laughs> oh, crabby. Wonder why you ain't got no buddies. The book of Sirach, chapter 21, verse 15. If a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it and add unto it. But as soon as one of no understanding heareth it. Ah, we already got that. I'm sorry. 26 is what I'm on. Sirach 26? Nah, 21 to 26. Book of Sirach, chapter 21, verse 26. The heart of fools is in their mouth. It says the heart of fools is in their mouth. They talk too much. They say everything that comes to their mind. But the mouth of the wise is in their heart. But the mouth of the wise is in their heart, man. They, they hold their words. They hold their words. In other words, don't be so quick to talk. Sit back, examine what's being said, examine what's being talked and actually act on it. One thing that I hate is a brother or a sister, not mostly brothers, because sisters don't, don't really fall in this category. You teach a class and they always got something to say. They always, yeah, and this, and yeah, and that, and yeah, 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 yeah. They'd be the, the brother three months later to fade in the wind like a fart. Dang. Don't smell the brother no more. <laughs> Every other brother that don't come around no more. I always had something to say. Why is in his own mind? I always got something to say. The heart of the fool is in their mouth. They just constantly talking. Be quiet and learn. Be quiet and learn. Make a friend. Don't sit there and talk and act like you know so much all the time. Brothers don't have that spirit. Drop that. Get Sirach chapter 5 and verse 2. It's the book of Sirach chapter 5 and verse 2. And this is what... Brothers that, that talk too much and all that, always, this is what category they fall in. This is what they always say, watch. Follow not thy own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. Read. And not the, follow the ways of their heart. All this stuff that you talking and y'all you know so much and all that, you walking in the ways of your heart. Can't be reproved. Can't nobody tell you nothing. Think you already know. Read. And say not, who shall control me? For my work and don't be and, and that's the thing matter of fact that's the reason why we don't it goes back that's the reason why we don't be fellowshipping because we don't want nobody to control us be all up in our business the scriptures say don't say who shall control me for my works why i gotta report to the leadership why i gotta do this why i gotta do that why they gotta know why they yada 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 until something happened that's how people are with the police get the police you do the police or whatever until somebody breaking their house get on the police Nah, forget the police. But we don't need them. Why I gotta why I gotta tell people my business? Can't nobody tell me nothing. 
Verse 3, read that again. And say not, who shall control me for my works? For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. It says the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. Read. Say not, I have sinned, and what harm hath happened unto me? For the Lord is long-suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. You see that? When you when you won't take counsel, can't nobody tell you nothing? That's actually sin. When you ain't coming around, ain't fellowshipping, when you ain't speaking, because remember, it's a, the book, the whole Bible is commandments. So in Malachi 3 and 16, where it says that those that feared the Lord spake often, why? Because he's expecting us to, because that's a commandment. Forsake not the fellowship, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. That's a commandment, gather yourselves together. That's a commandment for us. It's like you can't just do it here and there a little bit, here and there, sprinkle on. Now I understand some of us got to work, so don't get me wrong. If your brothers and sisters that got to work and they got a real busy schedule or whatever, but those of you who don't, y'all just be making excuses. Shame on you. Shame on you. And I ain't doing this to try to make y'all feel bad. Like, but tomorrow's a, a, a good day for y'all to start. Be like, you know what? I'm going to change. How do we get? Where, where's the stuff at in Dallas? Let's, I'm going because I'm about to. But the, the thing is, you got to start somewhere. If not tomorrow, <laughs> we got fundraisers here. We got stuff that we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to start coming together. We got an event committee, all that. You got an event committee? Put yourself in the mix. And you know, we put a lot of effort into to creating these events, and then you have of the hundred and some people that showed up on the Sabbath, be thirty. If that, and, it, and then not the thirty, and then twenty six of them is kids, right? <laughs> don't, and don't be the brother or sister that can say you going and then flake out the last minute. You know, we understand that you got a schedule of other things you got to do, but help us help you, if you will. Right. Continue reading. Uh, did you have something to say? You better say no. something. Go ahead. Uh, say not, I have sinned, and what harm have happened unto me? Like, I ain't yet. I have sinned, and what harm have happened to me? Yeah, I don't be fellowshipping and whatnot. And I, yeah, I made excuses, but ain't nothing going to happen to me. God knows my heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. Read. For the Lord is long-suffering. He's, he's long-suffering. He's, meaning, he's going to give you mercy. He's going to be long-suffering with you because he loves you. He don't want to destroy you. He wants you to fix it and get it right. So he's going to deal with it for a little bit. Read. He will in no wise let thee go. But he ain't forgot. He ain't going to let you go. He might, hey, he might deal with you all the way up until that point where you stand in front of him saying, Lord, Lord, I'll praise him. The black Messiah is here. I prophesied in your name and did this and that. I don't know you. Go over there with the booty shakes. <laughs> Read on. Verse 5. Concerning propitiation. Concerning Be atonement. Be not without fear to add sin unto sin. Read. And say not, his mercy is great. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. Don't think that God, because he's so merciful, that he's just going to let us get away with sin. Don't believe it. You're deceiving yourself. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Don't think that you can just not fellowship, not communicate, not come around and whatnot, show up every once in a while, have the lukewarm spirit where you just dip in, dip out on the Sabbath, and think God is going to be pacified for that. Like he's going to be like, nah, I ain't doing enough. I ain't doing enough. I understand. I won't stay home and watch TV. I understand. Don't think he's going to be pacified for that. The day's going to come where he's going to spew you out of his mouth. Like you said, go ahead. W what does it mean? Verse 5, read it again. Verse 5. Concerning propitiation, be, with not, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. What does that mean? Be not without fear to add sin unto sin. Go ahead. I only had one option to choose from uh, this hand raising. Shalom, brother. Uh, what it means to add not fear from sin unto sin, it means... Don't think that God isn't watching because if you sin, he will write it down and he will make sure that he encounter on the day of atonement. Okay, good, good. You know, the the Christians, they always have the mindset that, you know, they're saved already, right? So now they do whatever they do because we all sin and they keep going, sinning and sinning and think that they still saved. But what God is trying to say, tell you is, First off, you're not saved yet. Second, if you sin and you keep sinning, you're only digging yourself into a worse hole. So we have to get ourselves out of the hole. We have to sin less and less and less. 
not saying more and more and more. Mm -hmm. So if we want that atonement, that means we have to be afraid to sin again. We've already sinned enough, and we're supposed to be getting salvation from that sin that we got to get rid of. But you sin again and again. I'm gonna read something for you. Read a few. Go ahead. This is Sirach chapter 17, verse 25. It says, "Return unto the Lord, and forsake thy sins." Make thy prayer before his face and sin less. It says return to the Lord. First of all, that means we're coming back to the Lord because in the world we were not with the Lord. All the 20 some years of life you've been living in sin, now you're going to return to the Lord. And then it says forsake your sins. Give up the things that you were doing in sin. You were a fornicator, give it up. You were smoking cigarettes, give it up. Whatever your sin might have been, give it up. I, can I get him with one of the sins? Oh, I'm, I'm gonna give him a sin for you. You said a fornicator, you smoke a cigarette. This is the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 19. These be they who separate themselves, mm -hmm. sensual, not having the spirit. Read uh, 25 again. Sirach, chapter 17, verse 25. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. So forsake the being a Facebook is right only, to being a homebody. The ones that uh, hate to come around the brother and forsake that. The ones that don't want to call your sister, forsake that. Because that's a sin. Because this book is the book of the commandments of God. Not the book of suggestions, but the book of commandments. Read on. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. And offend less. Meaning, what you were doing was, all, was too much. The amount of time that you spent away from the body was too much. So start coming around more and more and more until it's no longer an issue. Mm -hmm. All right. Sin less. Sin less. We're going to mess up. we trying to get it right. We're going to stumble. Remember, we all babes, right? We all babes in Christ. And what is a baby known for? Stumbling and falling, spilling stuff on themselves, being messy and whatnot. But as we grow, we stumble and fall less. We drool on ourselves less. We get messy less. We ain't spilling our spaghetti all on our laps and on the floors like babies, we growing and we growing to a certain point so that we can help. One day, just like all children, one day they grow up so they can have kids that grow up behind them and they teach them how, not to, how to walk and not to fall and how to pee in the toilet and all that stuff. What's so funny? People pee in the toilet. Some grown folks still don't know how to pee in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get um, Ephesians. Real quick, let me find it real quick. First, Ephesians chapter 4. Nah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Ephesians 4 and 28. Remember, at the beginning of the class, I said everything we do affects each other. Everything we do, good, bad, and ugly, it affects us. If we truly, one body, one mind, one spirit, if we truly endeavoring to keep the unity of the body, everything that we do affects the brother or the sister that's next to us. It affects not only them, the people that you can see, but believe it or not, it affects the people in New York, the brothers and sisters in New York, in Cali, in uh, Atlanta, and it's so many of us, I can't even name all of them. But it affects the whole body. This ain't the only body, I hope y'all know. Everything y'all do affects everybody. We got brothers right now that, that, that get caught up in stuff, and next thing you know, they saying, I done heard my name on the internet. Yeah, Judah. GMS, I'm like, how the hell GMS know me? Everything I do, why? Because I put out a song. So if they see now GMS know me, if I see something, they see me do something wrong, they be like, ah, yeah, I U I C be a big picture of Judah Mac. See, that affects all of y'all. Because we represent the body as a whole. So if any one individual makes a mistake, it reflects bad on everybody in here. Everybody with the I U I C logo is now going to be labeled because of what bad decision you might have made. And that's why we don't be letting people get that shirt. You be getting that shirt, be here, you be the devil. Being that if we catch you in the in the uh, his and her XXX store coming out with IUIC shirt on bag of videos. <laughs> Hell no. Get that. Uh, what I say? Ephesians four and twenty eight. Four and twenty eight. Read that. It's the book of Ephesians, chapter four, verse twenty eight. Let him that stole steal no more. Let him that stole steal no more. Let him that was in sin, don't be in sin no more. Read. But rather, let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. Why? Why is it saying for him to work? 
that he may have to give to him that needed. That he may have to give to him that needed. What is that talking about, brothers? It says, let him steal, that stole steal no more. In other words, the, the guy that was in sin, the brother and sister that was in sin, that was messing up, don't let, let him mess up no more. Let him be busy and work, that he may have to give to him that needed. What is that talking about? Right here. Uh, no, so, uh, faith without works is dead. So yeah, one one of the ways that we repent for sins is we stop doing it, and then we start putting in work for the Most High. Yes, that, that's not what this is saying right here, though. Who else? That's yeah. That's part of it right there. Now read that again. I know it sounds like it's only talking about. Money, you know, given to somebody that needed it or whatever. But these scriptures get deeper than that. Read that again. Let him that stole steal no more. Let him that was in sin stop that. Don't be in sin no more. Grow up. Come up out of that. Read. But rather, let him labor. Let him put in the work. That's what the brother, the first brother was talking about. I forgot his name. I'm sorry. What's your name again? Uh, Devin. Devin. That's what he's talking about. That you start putting in works. Stop sinning. Start putting in works. Read. Working with his hands, the thing which is good. Working with your hands, the things which is good. Keeping God's commandments. Read. That he may have to give to him that needed. That you may have a testimony, that you may have an experience to give to another brother that's coming up behind you that needed. Another sister that's coming up behind you that needed. See, we're not getting right only for ourselves. We're getting right for each other. We're the body. If my pinky is, 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 is dying off and I put some ointment on it and some medicine, I'm not doing it just for the pinky's sake. I'm doing it so that thing don't creep up my arm and my hand end up right. getting cut off. And next thing you know, my elbow and then my shoulder. And next thing you know, I got a heart attack because I got poison all in my body. We're not working just for ourselves. Matter of fact, we're not working for ourselves. We're working for the brother next to us. That's how it talks about a, a, a chain. Bishop always uses this analogy with a chain. You're only as strong as your weakest link. If this link is linked to this link and they too strong, and this link is only thinking about linking to that link, and that one to that one and that one, and everybody's playing this part, then you ain't gonna be able to break that chain. And that's what we need to be. Rightly fit together. Read that again. Verse 28, Ephesians 4, verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather, let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. Now I'm going to just read it plain. That also goes into us when it comes to giving alms, when it comes to us going out and being men, being productive sisters also. We do that work not only just so we can have stuff for ourselves, but also so we can give to him that need it. Because we're supposed to give to a man that need it, right? Right, Anybody? Do we supposed to give to anybody that need it? No. no, why not? Why not? You telling me so these people on the corner right here that hold them signs up talking about I'll work for food. You ain't supposed to give them nothing? Why not? Who, who knows the scripture? No, sir. That's not it. That's not it. Who knows the scripture? All you brothers in here, y'all know the scripture? There we go. Stand up, we can't see you, can't hear you. Hey! Yep, absolutely. Sirach 12, get there real quick. And I got a precept about labor. Okay, let's, yeah, let's pull it. Alright. You want Sirach first? Yep. Uh, 12. Sirach 12. The book of Sirach, chapter 12, and verse 1. When thou wilt do good, know to whom thou doest it. It says, when, look, it's the, the Bible is a trip. I had to bring you all the way back. It says, when you do good, know to whom you're doing it. All of us in here, what does that say for us? What are we supposed to do with each other? We're supposed to what? Good. No. It says, who said it? We're supposed to know each other. How can we do good to each other? We don't know each other. It says, when you do good, know to whom you're doing it. That's just like when we bring in arms in here. 
Y'all know when y'all bring y'all arms up, y'all ain't bringing them up so because y'all feel like y'all know us, y'all see us on videos, we sit up here at the table, and it's going to us like we're going to pay our car notes and our rent with it. It goes to everybody in here. It goes to the body. Y'all bringing arms, know to whom you're doing. Yeah, okay, you bring the arms, you're giving it to the Lord or whatever, but the Lord don't need the money, so what is he telling you to do it for? Us, each other. That's what it ain't like we taking it to the bank of the Lord and they putting it in one of the tubes and shoot up in the... <laughs> We're doing it for each other. When you do good, know to whom you're doing it. Read. When thou wilt do good, know to whom thou doest it. So shalt thou be thanked for thy benefits. And you'll be thanked for your benefits. Read. Do good to the godly man. Do good to the godly man. So when you're doing good, when you're giving, so you, when you're working, that laboring, that which is good, so you have to give to him, to him that need it. It's talking about the godly man. It's talking about the brothers and sisters and the truth. That we'll have to give to each other when we need it. Is that it on it? And thou shalt find a recompense. And if not from him, then, then yet from the most high. And you're going to get a payback. If not from your brother, immediately, because maybe he can't pay you back. Or maybe he just, you know, a niggard. You know what I'm saying? If you don't get it from him, then you'll get it from the most high. So don't trip. What you want to pull? Uh, Sirach, chapter 33, verse 17. Goes with laboring. You know, um, it says, consider that I, I labor. Okay. You say 33, 17? Yes. The book of Sirach, chapter 33, verse 17. Consider that I labor not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. So the work that you put in for this truth is not about yourself only. It's for everybody else that seeks learning. Damn, the example that you set forth, right? When you put in for works, you keeping the commandments, you're doing it for all those that seek learning. Because if you're a brother or sister in this truth, yeah. And you're putting in a certain amount of works and then you fall or you, you bug out You can affect the next brother or sister sitting next to you So you got to be mindful of what you're doing is true how you conduct yourself because they looking at your example If you a soldier or officer or whatever And you sitting there rolling a certain type of way a brother that's up underneath you Look and see oh well he doing it and you can affect that person's spirit by what you do So you got to consider that it's not for you only the decisions that you make, every step that you take is not for you only. You got to be mindful of all those around you. Absolutely. It's a rock 40 and 25. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 40, verse 25. Gold and silver make the foot stand sure. Money, your money can make your foot stand sure. I Meaning you take care of yourself. Read. But counsel is esteemed above them both. But counsel is better than both of them. Why? Because in counsel, when you got a, a right counsel around you, it'll keep you from making bad life decisions. You can make, you can have all the money in the world and make some bad life decisions, and money don't mean nothing. The money don't mean nothing. You find yourself in a position where you jacked up, your health is jacked up, you make bad decisions and lose all your money. It's like that show with them uh, bad stories of the lottery winners. Ah, uh, yeah, they be get, they be dying. Yep, be all on drugs. They got all that money, didn't have counsel on how to use it properly, and look where it went. That's up their whole life. And they be jacked up. And that's what the the reason I pull the scripture is because it's importance in counsel. It's importance in counsel. But where your counselors gonna be? If your counselors are, are and in in the world, then what? Go back to uh, what was that at First Corinthians three and eighteen. If you got worldly counselors, they're going to get you jacked up. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 18. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Why? Read. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. The counsel of this world is foolishness with the Most High. Most I ain't dealing with this this type of counsel. And y'all, I mean, dealing with that worldly counsel. The counselors that you should be looking for are the counselors in the Word of God. The men, women, in the congregation. Those are the counselors, the leadership. One thing that I hate too is brothers, sisters, do not counsel, uh, we call it laterally. Or down. Or down. Yeah. Don't. Do, do not counsel with your yeah with your peers. Like when I counsel, I counsel up. There's certain things. There's certain things that I counsel with. Like I counsel with as a Naya 
or whatever, and concerning you know, money, brother's real, he's, he's strong when it comes to money and finances, what I counsel with him, because he knows that thing, you know what I'm saying, but spiritual matters and, and things like that, certain things you counsel up. We find brothers to be going off because they be counseling with each other. How long you been in the truth? Three months? How long you been in the truth? Six months? Yeah, you know, I need some advice about my wife, you know what I'm saying, things are going bad, you know what I'm saying, but, it's the law of marriage, you know, because I like another sister and with him. <coughs> hey, I feel you, brother, because you know what I'm saying? It's like, come on, man. Are you serious? Next thing you know, you're getting a divorce because your wife done found that you was talking to somebody else. Counsel up. Don't be stupid. Counsel up. Counsel men of experience. And men of experience don't always uh, mean old, neither. Get that in Job. I'll just show you that real quick. Men of experience don't, also, uh, don't always mean that they are older than you. When I first came into the truth, there was a lot of young brothers um, that I looked up to. They didn't know I looked up to, to them, but I looked up to them. It's the book of Job, chapter 32, verse 7. Yeah, that's it. I said, they should speak, and a multitude of years should yeah. teach wisdom. What would you say, also? They should speak. Yes, they should. But they don't always. Rarely do, rarely do they. Matter of fact, really them are some of the them are some of the old fool. Old fool. Them are some of the dumbest people. I've been in the show for fifteen. I've been in the uh, church for fifty two years. You can't tell me nothing. I remember. That's why I don't even be trying to get through Christians no more. Cause the older you are, the harder it is to get you to repent. Cause you got a lot of nigga nonsense to break through. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm and, and that's why you see in this truth, the majority of us are young people. Yeah, you know what, you're right. You're absolutely right. The majority of the people coming up in this truth are new. And it goes back like when we was in the wilderness and we had to get purged out in the wilderness in Egypt. In uh, the wilderness coming out of Egypt. Remember all the old people, he just killed them all. Mm -hmm. Who was left? Joshua and Caleb. Joseph and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb. James McGibbon. Two, the young dudes, they came out. Everybody else, all them old cats, like, man, kill these dudes off. They do, you all these old. Dead, yeah. Another scripture conjunction, what you said? Sure, go ahead. Um, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 8. I was just about to go there. Look, I was right there. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. One verse nine. And boy, good. Eight. Eight. Well, eight, nine. Okay. eight and nine, yeah. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Great men are not always wise. This is we still in Job 32. It says, Great men are not always wise. Read. Neither do the aged understand judgment. Neither do the aged men always understand judgment. So when you counsel it, don't look for somebody just because they're older than you. Now, if, sisters, if you want to counsel with somebody because they're older than you, because they know how to make greens better, then you'll find out the greens recipe. But on spiritual matters, it's going to jack you up. Do not be counseling with sisters thinking that they wise sisters, and you end up getting messed up. Now, I ain't saying none of y'all stupid, but I know outside of God's word, we all stupid. And a lot of times, if you're counseling with somebody and they ain't using the Bible, it's a bunch of... But I believe, well, I believe, and this is what I would do, and this, now nah, this is what God says, this is what God says to do, this is what God is supposed to, this is what you're supposed to do in this, and this is what you're supposed to do in that, and make peace or whatever. You hear a bunch of talking, that ain't the counsel of the Lord. You might as well just, just go ahead and jump off the cliff because you're going to fall off. Who, who are the age that you're supposed to be counseling with, brothers? If it's not based off the worldly age, who are the age that you're supposed to be counseling with? Those that are your seniors in the truth that have came in before you have got experience. Not the sister that or the brother that just came in three months before you, a year before you. Those that have years of experience over you. They've got experience, they've got knowledge, and they know the scriptures. Absolutely. Where the soldiers at? Come out, come out, make yourself known, stand up. Brothers, when stuff goes wrong, that's your first line of defense right there. That's your immediate contact. These soldiers. We got some that's out of town right now, right? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. That's your immediate contacts right there. Boom. You counsel with them. They've been around. The reason that they soldiers because they've been proven. They've been they've been around for a minute, and they got enough sense to know that okay, if it's something too heavy, then let me go get Shaman. Let me go find Yakin. Let me go get Kashalakia. It's something too heavy. And then with them, if it's something too heavy outside of that, sisters the same way. These are the counselors. If something too heavy outside of that, once it goes there, then it goes here. Then they gonna come to me. They gonna come to. Uh, they gonna come to Bezalel. They gonna come to uh, Officer Azaniah, and they gonna come to me. And if I can't deal with it, I'm going to the bishop. And the bishop can't. The bishop cannot can't deal with it. You know he's going to Bishop Nathaniel. There's a there's there's a line that we don't break, and it keeps us safe. But when you get the spirit, can't nobody tell you nothing. Ever. You can sit down. Thank you. I appreciate you, bro. When you get that spirit on you, can't nobody tell you nothing, then you're just going to be out there to the wolves and you're going to be jacked up. But do not think just because somebody's aged in number of years that that means that they're wise. Drop that, give wisdom of Solomon 4 and verse 8. It's the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse 8. For honorable age is not that which standeth in length of time, nor that is measured by number of years. But wisdom is the gray hair unto men, and an unspotted life is old age. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Wisdom is what you're going to gain by keeping God's commandments over a course of time. It says, but the gray hair of, what does it say? It says, Verse nine. but wisdom is the gray hair unto men. And an unspotted life is old age. A life of keeping God's commandments and overcoming your sin. That's the gray hair that you look for in, in wisdom. Those are the ones that you look to counsel with. Don't just think you can go anywhere and counsel. Because you get yourself jacked up. Get to Rock chapter 37 and 11. What happens, we end up doing our own thing and we go against counsel. Then we get jacked up and then we won't. The counselors we should have went to in the first place to fix it. And when they don't, then we start blaming it on them. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 37, verse 11. Neither consult with a woman touching her of whom she is jealous. It says, neither consult with us for you sisters. Neither consult with a woman touching her of whom she is jealous. Read. Neither with a coward in the manners of war. Don't, brothers, don't be trying to consult with, hey man, I got some, some real heavy stuff going on. We got to go out here and go to camp and it's heavy and it's net. And you know, brothers are scared and meek and timid and don't want to, you know, don't consult with him about things like that. Read. Nor with a merchant concerning exchange. <laughs> you talking about money and you're going to con, con, uh, counsel with somebody who's trying to always trying to sell you something. You can't talk to him about money. You gonna next thing you know, you're gonna come out the pocket. You're gonna be worse gonna be worse off than when you sit down and talk to him. Nor with a buyer of selling. Hey, you talking to somebody about money, they always try to sell something. They all they're a merchant. They always gotta try to sell something. You're like, man, I ain't got no money. You leave and then next thing you know, you done bought a car. Dang, I don't know what happened, man. I just got him. I was in debt when I went in, I'm trying to get out of debt. I came out and I got ten thousand more debt. That happens at the car lot. It's funny. I used to sell cars, so I used to see it happen all the time. Nah, I didn't do that, so I quit. Three. Nor with a buyer of selling. Mm -hmm. Nor with an envious man of thankfulness. Nor with an unmerciful man touching kindness. Nor with a slothful for any work. Nor with a hireling for a year of finishing work nor with an idle servant of much business. It says, nor with the idle servant of much business. What it's going into is don't counsel with people that, huh? Go up to verse eight. All right, it says, nor with a, you threw me off. Read that again. Uh, nor with the high, uh, idle servant of much business. Finish it off. Uh, nor with the unmerciful man touching kindness, nor with the slothful for any work, nor with the hireling for a year of finishing work, nor with the idle servant of much business. Hearken not unto these in any manner of counsel. It says, hearken not unto these in any manner of counsel. What it's telling you basically is be careful with who you counsel with. Be care I know what you was talking about in verse 8. Be careful with who you counsel with. You don't want to just counsel with anybody. Counsel is important. Remember we read it was talking about silver and gold is good, but counsel is better than both of them. 
Counsel can mess your whole life up. Or it can potentially put you in a position of knowledge to where you end up fixing your whole situation if you follow right counsel. But you ain't gonna know right counsel unless you right up in here. Like for instance, some of y'all might want to counsel. I done had brothers want to counsel with me on certain things that I ain't got no clue about. And they wouldn't know that I ain't got no clue about that because they don't know me. They ain't around enough. They ain't spent enough time. They don't know. There's certain things that I can't counsel you about, but he can. Certain things that the bishop will say, I ain't, you know, I need the scripture on the, you know, saying this certain stuff, but I can't counsel you about that. But Kasalakia can. He knows about that. And he's in the, I know he's in the truth and he keeps the commandments, so go to Kasalakia, he can counsel you about that. You know what I'm saying? But we got to be able to know each other enough to know how we can. Matter of fact, watch this. Verse 8. Now it's time for verse 8. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 37, verse 8. Beware of a counselor and know before what need he had. For he will counsel for himself, lest he cast the lot upon thee. You got to know the people around you, basically. What that's going into is know the people around you. You might counsel with somebody, be the wrong person to counsel with, and because you ain't around enough, you don't know him, you get counseled out of your droves. Sisters. I mean, I'm married now, I don't know how it happened. Because you wasn't trying to pay attention to nobody. You sitting over there just, man, he ain't trying to everybody talking to me. I ain't talking to nobody else. And then that, to that smooth talking brother come over. Yeah, let me be your counselor. Billy D. Billy D come over and won't counsel you. And next thing you know, you jacked up and you locked in marriage. And then you out of the church because you don't want to marry him and you know you can't stick around because we don't play with, with that mess. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24. It's the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. It says consider one another in everything we do. Like I said in the beginning of the class, we got to consider one another. That we provoke each other to love and good works. That's what it's all about. That's what this life, this walk is all about. This is our little sanctuary in this captivity. And we got to consider one another to provoke each other to love, to keeping God's commandments. I can't provoke you to keep God's commandments if I don't know you. You don't give me the time and the, and the, and the love and respect to be able to counsel with you and know you can't provoke you to keep God's commandments. You might be in here, but you really ain't in here. You got to really examine yourself to see if that's you. And if it is, you got time, fix it. Fix it. It's always time unless the most high kill you. It's always time unless you die. No. First uh, Corinthians 12 and 25. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 25. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. You see that? It says we got to consider each other. Have the same care one for another. The same care that we would have for ourselves, for our immediate family. We got to have that same care one for another. The same way that I care about what happens to my knee, I care about what happens to my elbow, I care about what happens to my earlobe, the, 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 the stuff that you can't see, I care about what happens to my body. I'm supposed to care about, we're supposed to care about, all of us are supposed to care about what happens to one another. Having the same care for, care for each other. Man, I'm country, I care. Have the same care for each other. Care. You gotta care about each other. <laughs> And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Because if one of us suffer, it's supposed to be that we all suffer. God forbid one of y'all are really going through something and y'all been here every week and whatnot. And because y'all really ain't in the body like that, y'all just show up every week. Don't nobody know. And then y'all going through it by yourself. We done had, I done, especially with sisters. We had sisters that been around week after week and then... Matter of fact, I can think of one in here. Something go on with them, and they be like, don't nobody even care about me. Don't nobody ask about me. Didn't nobody even come to see me. We didn't even know nothing was going on with you. How would we know? Who are you communicating with? What's going on? 
And don't nobody care about it. The devil sitting and get in your ear. Don't nobody care about you. They don't really love you. They ain't your family. I'm your family. <laughs> and don't nobody know. Why? Because and y'all ain't been around. Ain't nobody don't y'all ain't making no fellowship. Y'all ain't working to build the unity, to build the friendship, build the love. The love of the congregation. Y'all not trying to get it. And when I say y'all, I'm talking to that one person that's cut right now. You ain't talking about me. That's what somebody out there saying. Mm -hmm. He ain't talking about me. Look at Probably. the sisters around. You see the one with their with they, with they hands all folded up. <laughs> Can't wait to get up out here and talk too much. There's more. I'm read that. Verse 26 again. Verse 26. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Like for instance, marriage. When one, one member suffer, we all suffer with it. One of y'all be honored, something happened with you, we all want to rejoice with you. It be secret marriages going on, stuff, you know, people don't know what's going on. All of a sudden, yeah, hey, by the way, we married. When did that happen? Dang, you don't love us enough, we can rejoice with you. Everybody, we have a wedding feast and everybody come together and, you know, what? What? You married? What do you, really what you're saying, when, when that happens, you know what they're really saying? It, we snuck off and, and did it. <laughs> and we know y'all gonna kick us out, so we got the paperwork. That's really what they're saying. When y'all do that. Brothers, don't do that. These are the daughters of Sarah. Make it known, make everything official, officially known. We had ways that we did things. That's how we gotta operate. People be secretive. Sneaking off. Read on. Y'all don't know, I'm really holding back when it comes to that. Verse 27. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. Mm -hmm. And God has set some in the church. Yes, it says ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. That's us. We are one body in Christ. Yes, we have our own lives or whatever, but we affect, we affect, we affect each other. It ain't no if, ands, buts about it. No maybes. When some of y'all don't show up and we ain't seen y'all in a while or whatever, and we know that y'all ain't out, it ain't like y'all out doing the Lord's work. Y'all just ain't showed up. Hey, what happened to him? Did he die? Anybody talk to him? No, I ain't got his number. You got his number. I ain't got his number. Where he at? Then two months later, he pop up in his Bible and you know what I'm saying? There, get my precept. Nigga, where you been at? Damn. <laughs> Back. Fingertips all brown. <laughs> what have you been doing, man? Let me see your fingers. <laughs> For the last two, three months. You've been smoking weed. You know, we could have helped you do that. Come back here, how I'm broke down, man. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> come around jacked up. Lips all cracked. <laughs> we gotta know each other. I'm telling you, brothers, sisters, the people that y'all around every week, y'all look at them and, and really actually reach out. Hey, brother, what's your, hey, you know what I'm saying? What's up with you? What's your number, man? Hey, what you like to do? And start really making relationships. Put the number in the phone. Take a picture of them. Boom. So when they call you, because you know how that number come through, you be like, who is this? Yeah, this is uh, Josiah. Who? Josiah. You know Josiah? From the church. Yeah, Josiah. Josiah from the church. Oh, you forgot about me? Yeah, you forgot. Take a picture of them. Cause y'all forget each other. Cause we gotta we gotta train ourselves to know each other. You don't have to be best friends to get somebody number. So you get the number, then you work on the friendship. You know what I'm saying? I got 75 numbers in my phone right now that I don't even remember who they are. I got about 2,000. Half of them probably fell out the truth. That's why you got about 2,000. It's time to do the purge. Half of them probably fell out the truth. But yeah, that's the thing. You know, brothers show up, sisters show up, or don't show up, and y'all don't realize that we be up here concerned. Like, where the brother at? We ain't seen the brother in a minute. Where the sister at? She ain't then, and then we forget about you, and then one day you pop in the door. You be like, be sitting there, be talking or whatever, be like, Hi, brother. Like, no, I don't know him. You know him? Yeah. So if you one brother that knows, they, they got a good memory, be like, yeah, I know him. He, he was here, you remember about three months ago, he was here strong for about five months. Now he was there strong about five months and he'd been gone for about three three months and he ain't showed up. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, that's the one brother. The one that used to always talk too much, ask the questions like he knew everything. <laughs> yeah, that's him. Yeah, Why his fingers burn? <laughs> 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 Why well, his fingers brown? His lips got a little brown circle in the middle of it. What are you doing? 
Nigga been smoking weed, that's what he been doing. That's why he ain't been around, he ashamed himself. Coat look all dusty from cigarette smoke. <laughs> We finished that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we finished that. One. All right, we better switch gears. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.